Hey there, guys, and welcome back to GSL Uncut. Chip and Joanna Gaines couldn't make it this week, but Melissa and I do have an amazing guest for you to hear from, social media superstar Zach King. Zach is known for his digital sleight of hand or magic. His videos consist of visually baffling special effects and editing techniques that leave viewers' minds blown. He has well over 100 million followers across social media, and his videos have been viewed literally billions of times. Zach was kind enough to sit down with Melissa and I to discuss his upbringing and everything that has made him the man that he is today. He was so generous with his time, he even stayed and hung out with our family well beyond the recording of our podcast to view a movie that our kids made, which was a huge thrill for them. He is such a great guy. Melissa and I really enjoyed speaking with him. We hope that you enjoy the conversation. Without any further ado, here is Zach King. Yep, okay. ready to roll. All right. Thanks for being here. First of all, Zach. Yeah, we're really, really appreciate beautiful, it. Beautiful um, Texas. I don't know if people can see it or if it's overexposed, but... It might be a little overexposed. We're here. Are you telling people where we are currently at? We are in Dallas, Texas. And we're here for Vid Summit where you're actually speaking. Is that happening tomorrow? Yeah. And that's where we met last yeah. year. That's it why is. it's significant. We've known each other for at least, was that uh, over a year ago? It was just yeah. over a year ago. Yeah. This is our anniversary. Yeah, this is our anniversary <laughs> podcast. And so we actually went to your place for acai bowls for the first time. You had yep. us over for breakfast. That was great. Thank yep. you once again for that. And that was your first, your kid's first time having acai. It was yeah. my first time right. having acai. Let's yeah. go. You got us hooked. Now yeah. there's one spot in North Idaho that we always is, have to go to because there, it's the yep. only place with I, acai. I thought you were going to say you uh, you opened up, you were so excited you opened up your own spot it's up there. It's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea because that place <laughs> is back. But I don't know if it would do well where you are because isn't it cold like a lot of the year? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, half of the year that's the refreshing thing about acai if people don't know it's like this i don't even know what it is it's like i describe it as ice cream but in froyo but it's not i don't even think there's dairy in it it's kind of like froyo but consistency wise but with right? the acai berry yeah but Delicious. coconut milk and do they make it with coconut I milk know. all i know is it's like usually at healthy places so yeah. maybe it's not healthy but <laughs> at least yeah. i feel like i'm healthy well apparently you can buy it on i don't know if it's amazon or whatever there's a company that buys it or will sell it to you and then they ship it frozen and but then the you can make it the at home. Oh, is it crazy sugar? Yeah. Like yeah. That's, why my, kids, that's sugar. why my kids love it. Like, kids yes. are like, Dad, let's go. It's healthy. <laughs> Speaking of healthy and food, we brought a gift for you all the way from North Idaho. <laughs> oh, really? And it is the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> okay. So what, are you going to tell me what it is? <laughs> yeah. We are going to reveal it to you. Okay. Um, you and Rachel have a garden at your place, yes. correct? Yep. We brought you some <laughs> rainbow glass gem corn that you can okay. actually peel so, the kernels off and plant. Yeah. That's awesome. So, yeah, this is, we call it magic corn. So it seems so fitting for you. But <laughs> it's, it's, it's actually called literally, that. it's called That's glass what we call gem, it. but it's like iridescent and it's a native corn from Oklahoma. But it comes in all kinds of colors. So when. So I can plant this? Yeah. So you just break it apart and then you'll get the seeds. And so I thought your kids would think it was really That's fun. That's awesome. When is. Um, the planting season is you it? plant it just well in california it takes 100 days to okay. mature so like probably in california it's like anytime yeah, yeah. anytime probably that's yeah. awesome you know this looks like the stuff um when i was a kid we'd do like pilgrim yeah right. events and you'd have this on the table but yeah. i didn't know you could actually i thought i assumed it was like dry and dead but i didn't know you could plant this yeah yeah you can totally plant it and so that was Thank our first guys. three years yeah, absolutely. that we grew successfully in idaho we've been trying for four years and we got three years so we give you our first maze. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> does this, I should have brought some in return, some honey, which I didn't, it's hit or miss flying with honey because people like it's three ounces or less. Oh, yeah. And people right. are like, oh, it's a liquid. Yeah. So I usually don't bring it, but that would be, uh, did I give it you honey when you guys came to my house? No. no. Did I not? Oh, man. No. Um, does this make good popcorn? You, it does. And it yeah. makes a rainbow popcorn. Oh, like that's the centers sick. are popped. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Cool. It's really fun. So the centers stay all rainbow colored. The kids have a good time. Well, with thank it. you guys. Yeah, yeah. I'll get this back and we'll start planning. We figured, you know, farmer to farmer, we'll. Uh, I, bring I don't you qualify corn. as a farmer. <laughs> we <laughs> have we. a. Uh, when we got our house, there was an article that came out that called it a hobby ranch, and I I think that's fair, just yeah. because we are. I grew up on a farm in Oregon. Yeah. Um, it was a berry farm and an orchard. Mm -hmm. My dad is uh, not really known, but in the apple community there in the Pacific Northwest, he's known for having the uh, one of the biggest most varieties on one property. Wow. I think it's like 140 varieties of wow. apple tree. So basically every other apple tree is unique. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, he went to like scientists who are like grafting them and combining yeah. different. So, um, but I, I, I'm not really a farmer myself anymore. It's just, I'm a hobbyist. So I, try to, I try to plant yeah. and yeah. like 
things. Uh, we moved onto the property and there was a lot of things that were already there, like fruit trees, which is amazing in this yeah. past season. You're like apricots and yeah. and oh, nice. like I love my favorite is the limes, and then we have um, great avocados. Oh, so, so jealous! Those so are great. awesome. So you get citrus so, and avocado. So like every couple of days, and it's weird. Like in California, or just the variety of avocados we have, but they never stop. Like it just the trees. Seem to continue. There's a small really? like three month window where they stop. Yeah. Um, down by us, but. They keep coming, so we'll pick them, and it takes about two weeks from them oh, for them so to get awesome. like ready for guacamole and stuff. Ah, that is so so great. jealous. Yeah, I, wish I we know. Could do that. That's I, the one thing you guys probably don't. Oh get no, to way. no way! They're way too cold. Way yep. too short of a season. Yeah, we could never grow anything or lime, any kind of citrus like yeah. that. But I follow Rachel on Instagram, and yeah. so I see your apple harvest, and yeah. that, I saw your your uh, announcement for your daughter when you guys were picking apples last year. Yeah, yeah, so. we were we were up in Oregon. Um, there was I think a f- fire then. Um, but we do apple pressing and around this time, actually early, uh, October, end of September. Mm. And my dad has an old fashioned like apple press. So we like handpick them for a couple days, put them in the thing. And you, uh, have you guys ever done it? Do you have one at your farm? We have, we don't have one. We have done it in the past. So our neighbors back in Washington so state had one. It do is you guys really have fun. apple trees? We do, but yeah. they are very mature yet. Fortunately, next to us, our next door neighbor has a what? They have a ton of cherries. They have apples, yeah, blueberries, they all that have stuff. A hundred so. apple trees. So we live That's right fun. by an orchard. Cool shared driveway with them but we just planted our trees so they're only three years old yeah so it takes what like seven years or something for them to be i can't remember the age but we get some fruit we're already getting fruit it's just not very plentiful and a lot of it is very small immature fruit so but a couple years from now we should be looking at uh, a nice harvest like we had back in washington state before we moved and went to idaho yeah looking forward to that yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) it's an investment yeah when we moved there there was nothing it was just a field so we had to start from nothing and and then i mean there's so much fun stuff you can make um especially with apples. But like yeah. one of the things my family, my younger sister started working on is like their own. Um, it's funny. They're, they're not a brewery, but I think they like to think they are. Um, but they are doing some ciders. Cider and nice. so they're doing all kinds of different, like one of my sister, Megan's working on like a blueberry cider. And he's working on like a red, but it's also like kind of a nod to the berry farm aspect of the property as yeah. well. Um, but yeah, it's fun to like experiment. And like we had so many the first year explode and like, yeah. Uh, we put way too much oh, yeah. yeast in them, or yeah. too much, or like let the sugars go for too long. Yeah. It's a science. Um, yeah, we give really them is. away, and we just always tell people like, be really careful when you open it. We don't know <laughs> if this one's gonna like explode in your face, or this right. one's gonna be like completely a dud. Yep. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's fun to like experiment with like stuff you grow on, on your farm. Yeah. It is. We've been there, done that. We had some. Uh, what was it? The plum champagne essentially oh, is what it became. Yeah, well, it became champagne. I didn't try to make champagne. That's a yeah. problem when it, I mean, you try that, to make that your own. That sounds pretty hard, right? Yeah. It. It, it wasn't great. Yeah. It was overly carbonated. So. And fermented. Failed experiment. <laughs> yeah. So well, it was like champagne vinegar. It was awful. Oh, nasty. <laughs> it was awful. Nasty. When we moved into our house, we found like there was a vineyard and it's not much. She said you could make like two or 300 bottles of wine, which sounds like a lot, but yeah. like for a vineyard, it's, it's right. just a couple yeah. rows. Yeah. And, um, we go into this little back barn area and there's all of these giant five gallon, um, glass jugs of like basically a vinegar at this yeah. point, which yep. she had tried like years ago and it's all like molded at the yeah. top and, yeah. um, yeah, past experience. And they're still there. I haven't cleaned them out yet. So <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> when I get into winemaking, we'll clean those out and use those. So is there going to be, there's going to be Zach King wine then in the future? Well, we had a vintner come in and look at the varieties cause we wanted to do that. Yeah. And then uh, like, he was like, Hey, at the end of the day, he was really nice about it, but he's like, you should probably tear these out and start over and pick one variety because mm. the the problem with our land is all of those vineyards even though they're mature now um they're like i mean mature they're like 12 years old mm-hmm. um but there are like 14 different varieties so every other plant is okay. a different one so yep. you could make maybe a rosé or something right but you can't make something like uh your own cab yeah. like which is probably what i'd want to do like a red wine or something yeah maybe but a blend a blend could be red cool blend, yeah but i also don't think like i'm not the kind of person I usually go into projects thinking like, oh, I can do this and I can do this really well. Right. With wine or anything like of that kind of craft, I know I would probably botch it and it would. Mm. And I, I respect the craft of it. Yeah. Right? Too much to almost like venture into it. Yeah. Um, I, that's why I kind of like honey because the bees do the work. I take a small portion, like twenty percent from our hives, and then it's like I can't really mess that up. <laughs> but I feel like wine is a big deal, and plus there's yeah. like I'd be nervous gifting it. Because if it does suck and everyone's like, oh, well, thank you. It's so good. But yeah. they're lying to me, yeah. to my face. Like, I, I'd rather just 
Probably not. Be a fun little oh. social experiment, maybe. Yeah, you never yeah. know when you gift stuff. Like, because I'll can stuff and then I'll give it to them. But I have gotten really bad canned food. Yeah. And you're like, it was great. Like, I've never told someone I didn't <laughs> right. like no their jalapeno jelly. No one's ever going to say it's no. bad. You don't so, get honest feedback. Yeah. No. No. Not ever. Because people are too gracious. They're not going to be like, that was so bitter and terrible. And yeah. So, yeah, that's that's pretty funny. Do you guys do canning and all of that? Or? We do. We don't have enough trees for that. But, yeah, we'll can, like, all the apricots, um, which is a good amount. Like, we yeah. just give it away because it's, it's too much. But nice. um, yeah. it's also a lot of work to can, though. It's so much Especially work. with, like, we have three little kids um, who are all under six years old. And so just the can- boiling water, like, tons of pots yeah. and glass containers is just maybe in a couple years. But it's just, yeah. like, kind of scary and we had a kid, our middle son, Liam, got burned by coffee like a couple years ago. Oh. And ever since then, he's just been like, doesn't like to be near the burners because yeah. uh, he knows it's hot. Yeah. So, yeah, eventually. Yeah. Eventually. But like right now, the chaos of like our youngest just started crawling. So that's a whole other. Oh, like, yeah. She'll be crawling through the kitchen. And we're like, we're trying to cook uh-huh. and like don't step on her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and you're so, talking hot water and you don't want to be moving that from the sink to the but stove. Eventually. It is a fun. Like I remember that as a kid, but I also yeah. remember the flip side, which is maybe why I don't like it because my dad went super extreme into everything. And so he, when we canned, it was like canning for days. Or like, for example, <laughs> when we made we made homemade dog food for our dogs because mm-hmm. he wanted the healthiest mm-hmm. dog food. Um, he couldn't just buy like the bag, you know, 50 bag thing yep. for some reason. And so we would make um, homemade dog food, which is literally like almost burger patties that were better quality than what we ate as humans. Yeah. And the assembly line for that was all me and my four, uh, four of us siblings and my mom and my dad. And it would be a two day process from like oh. whatever, like taking the raw veggies and cutting them and then mixing them with the, the ground beef that we got from Costco, like endless amounts. Yeah. So I think I'm maybe just over like food prep and canning for now. Yeah. And then uh, eventually maybe I'll get excited a couple of years. Yeah. That's cool. It sounds very familiar. Yeah. So your upbringing sounds very similar to the way it is that we are raising up our children. Do you look back upon your childhood fondly? I do. Yeah. I do. Absolutely. We make fun of like my parents now yeah. in, a, in a sweet way because right. I'm, especially my dad, because he was so intense. Like mm-hmm. you guys built your house, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you're building, you built a bunch of things and you're building a barn. We've been building nonstop for the last four years. Yeah. 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 I feel like Literally. you guys moved in and you're like just changing every, erecting buildings everywhere. Yeah. Pretty much. Just and been work, yeah. that, like, because you put your kids to work with, like, eh. are you guys, you're the general sort contractors, of. right? We are. Yeah. yeah. So, like, what do you mean, sort of? They help out where they can. What would they say? They have they have chores. They're not doing any real heavy lifting, but they help out when they can. Kamani's helped with a lot of the sheeting and stuff like that. Uh-huh. And yeah. I think that's, that's been good for them growing there. up. But, um we try not to force them to do things that they don't. We know that they don't want to do. Got it. Really. Yeah. So. We want them to have a well, childhood good. and be out yeah. and playing and not working. Because we do get criticism. People are like, "Why aren't your kids working alongside you?" It's like, "Well, mm. because they're not construction workers or yeah. children, and we don't want them building. We'll build for eight hours a day sometimes yeah. or into the night, and I don't want my kids doing that." Yeah. So. It's, I mean, at least my memory of it was I was definitely forced, and I yeah. was definitely working multiple hours a day. Yeah. <laughs> are you glad that uh, that's the case in retrospect? Uh, yes and no. Like, there's some things weird tasks that I hate doing. Like, yeah. for example, um, anytime my wife, which was this week, she always like wants to frame like a new thing she gets on the wall. But I hate framing uh, like <laughs> a pic- even a picture because my dad was so meticulous and anal about like leveling it and like. <laughs> He would have, he wouldn't just let like, you know, when you um, drill into the drywall and it makes that little like white dust. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He wouldn't let that fall on the floor. So we'd have to be there with a, a like a wet paper towel against the wall <laughs> and a vacuum right there. And it was just like the setup to do that. Yeah. And, and like, we didn't have wireless vacuums like we do now. Uh, I just like, every time I hear my wife say like, oh, can you frame this? I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not. It's going to be like a 30 minute thing. And my dad's going to yell at me for making it quicker. I'm going to redo it. <laughs> You gotta so, get the tanks there's like a couple things I don't like to do like that, yeah. but um, and we frame like my dad is a general contractor of mm-hmm. our home mm-hmm. uh, in Oregon, and so we and we lived on the property in a motorhome while we were constructing it. So we would like spend a lot of our time in the house, and it was fun for like all that was like I have pretty fond memories of it. Like right. we installed one of my favorite projects was um, heated flooring. Oh, cool. and so I don't know if you did you guys put that in your house? No, we didn't do heated flooring. We no. should have. It's a ton of work. Yeah. Uh, I imagine where you live, it, it'd be really nice. But yeah. it's also one of those payoffs. Like it'll be on now, and I'm like, is this on? Like, I don't know if that was worth the work. Yeah. But it's like basically like this small, smaller than inch tube that you kind of like staple right. uh, or like nail underneath your floor before mm-hmm. you lay another concrete pass. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but I remember that took forever because the nail gun kept piercing the the water pipes. Oh no! And so, and then you'd have to rip out the whole thing, and yeah. we do that. And then we figured out you could also just use connectors and take out that one section and yeah. keep going. But it was like, I mean, that took I want to say like a month to just do. Oh, their wow. home was like yeah. five six thousand square feet. Oh wow, big and house! It's all it's all with that flooring stuff. So wow. that wow. was one of the big projects that I will never do in my my house, but. I yeah. think after the experience, like I don't need to build my own home mm. like you guys anymore. <laughs> um, maybe that'll change someday. Like yeah. the fun part would be designing it, right? Like yeah. saying like just the whole dreaming process of building a home would be so much fun. And I think that's like the part that I would love. But then the the make this, there's so many decisions mm-hmm. and I just feel like it's too many decisions for your brain. To, yeah. It's overwhelming to at times. It really is. Yeah. And you have to agree on the decisions, which is the hard part. Yeah. Or just defer to your wife in my case. He's that's, what I, that's what I would hundred yeah. percent do. Yeah. yeah. Well, you guys kind of, didn't you get your, the home that you're in now? And um, we, no, it? we just painted it. That's oh, really? all we did. Like, um, I'm sure Rachel wanted to get it, but we were like, no, this is, <laughs> I, I was like, no. Uh, oh, I thought it was ready. beautiful. I, so I assumed did, you guys had done it We painted it all. and like did a couple, um, like Rachel will still be like, you won't even let me do the tile or the fireplace or like all, she has a list of things yeah. that we're slowly talking about doing. Nice. Okay. But yeah. The Time first, to HGTV it. Yep. HGTV, do our own, well, YouTube show now. I yeah. Guess, you should. I guess is what you could do. Well, yeah. you could do it. You could do it magic. You could just be like. It would be a super short show because it'd be like, here's before. Zach King style. Yep, there you go. Here's after. <laughs> Fire's burning in the yeah. fireplace. Yep. Stockings so you, are hung. You guys do a lot of set design, set building with what it is that you do, correct? Yeah. So are, you, are you pretty involved in that process? I used no? to be, but not anymore yeah. in terms of the set building just because my construction is not up to code. Right. And my team would tell you that. Yeah. But when we first moved, we when things really picked up after like Vine, we needed a studio space. Mm-hmm. So we moved into a like, it was a 15,000 square foot warehouse. And the thing we lost about that is because all my videos had been shot in a home up to that point. Yeah. Like the, the business was a startup. We were working out of a house. And so we were just shooting in the house and it'd be like, it would match, you know, a regular person's home. Mm-hmm. But then all of a sudden the videos were like in this warehouse and it was kind of like just, it felt corporate mm-hmm. And so I like built a set that was another like 4,000 square foot kind of like fake house in, in the warehouse. And we started filming there. But that set is so, like, when I look at pictures now, it's like, it was so bad. Uh, and then we eventually had our whole team, when we got a production design team, come in and, like, rebuild it uh, the correct way. Because you want to have, like, walls, you know, for filmmaking, some walls need to move out so the camera can get in there. Right. You need to have, uh, I put in real hardwood floors, which quickly got scratched yeah. and ruined mm-hmm. versus, like, what you learn later is that it's just a vinyl floor that you, like, we unroll the day of or oh, a couple wow. days before looks like because it's all about what what does the camera perceive Mm -hmm. as reality right and there's so much you can fake uh in hollywood and filmmaking so Mm -hmm. that's the fun of it is figuring out like what will look real to the audience and then it's still cheaper than building i basically built a real like four thousand square foot home you know oh wow uh (laughs) when you can like fake all that and and save a lot of money yeah Oh, yeah. See, we should have just faked it. So what are you guys doing <laughs> with the barn? Is the barn, when I saw the barn project mm-hmm. on your channel, I was thinking YouTube studio. Yeah. Is that part of it? No, it's for our, it, it's for our free horses. Okay. So, you know, when they say there's no free horses, it's yes. because you have to build them a barn. Yes, of so, course. Yeah, no, it's an, an actual barn. It's going to be hay, tractor, horses. Okay. Tack room. So storage. Tack, yeah. YouTube studio, where does that live? Like where, where's the podcast? Where's the, the where's your editing? <laughs> Podcast <laughs> is in our old tiny home living space, which is in the shop, the original shop that we were living in for a couple of years when we first got to the property. And mm-hmm. then our YouTube studio, if you want to refer to it as such, is actually just our kitchen counter. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Because I do all the editing. And so I don't like to be absent from the family, yep. which makes my editing take three times as long. Yes, because I, I understand. I started wearing, yeah, I started wearing <laughs> yes. um, headphones, but... Eli mostly, he's very inquisitive. He will ask me a question about every three minutes, and mm-hmm. then I have to go back five minutes to get back in the vibe. Yep. So it takes forever. Yeah. I get very little I, I totally get that, though. I don't do all the editing anymore. There's a whole team of editors. But, I mean, I'm still, like, I have side projects. And, and the big thing I work on is, like, my own family videos just right. internally yeah. that never go out to the public. They're just yeah. my own my own library of them. Mm-hmm. Kind of like you. I, like, I archive mm-hmm. every two or three days. I know you archive probably every day. Yeah. But I archive every couple of days. But it takes a lot of time to go through mm-hmm. my iPhone reel and my cameras. And I'll sit there and it'll start. 
like my hopeful version is I start on the kitchen counter, I'm editing, and then the kids come over and then they see themselves and they want to watch yes. it or whatever, and they're like, yeah. play that back, and I'm like, um, I'm like, no, like I'm I'm like trying to time this to the music, guys, so like <laughs> I got to keep playing this, and they're like, no, or like whatever, uh, or then I do stop and make an yeah. edit. They're like, no, keep playing it. And I'm like, guys, I'm going to go to my office and I have to finish this. You can either like sit and watch or I'm going to like, but then I'm not part of family time, which right. is the bummer because yeah. it's hours and hours of yeah. your day. Yeah. For me, it's only like two hours in the evening. Yeah. But it's like, I'd rather sit here and feel like yeah. we're together and have the presence of family versus me off in the, in my office, yeah. you know, with the closed yeah. door so I can focus, mm -hmm. even though it is faster. That's something yeah. we constantly grapple with is, is the family dynamic and, and whether or not we are making sure that we are devoting ourselves to family first and not allowing, you know, all of our YouTube shenanigans to right. interfere mm -hmm. and get in the way. So, and I, I don't yeah. know if you have these thoughts, but the thoughts I've had is like, then, so I'm like editing, which is ironic, these family videos, but then I'm going to my office, closing my door, being away from the family. Yeah. I'm like, wait, but huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, there, to me, there's a lot of like I get therapy from editing and like it's a rehashing of memories for me and mm -hmm. uh, closing some doors too and moving on. So I'm never going to edit mm -hmm. that again because mm -hmm. um, yeah. there's no time. Right. But um, yeah, it's a weird juxtaposition. Of it really life. is. It's so nice to have all of that documented in such a romantic way with the way Melissa does things. Yeah. But at the same time, kind of like you said, you know, the, the reality of, of what it's what what it requires is something that we, we really do grapple with. Yeah, we do. We have these conversations all the time constantly because well, and I love your family videos yes. like Dear Rachel and how I became a dad. Those are my favorite videos that you make. Oh, thank you. Uh, those are I like every time I see something I'm and the, your new announcement of your daughter and everything. Yeah. So I watched that like the first five minutes it came out. I'm like, yes, Let's go. it's there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, those are my favorite ones. And then our kids will watch hours and hours and hours of when we say that we've watched hours of Zach King, we have watched we used to come in from working and then in our little tiny home and we yep. were crammed and we didn't have a dinner table or anything like that because it was just this tiny little room, Yeah, which is now our podcast studio the tiny home and we would just, they would watch Zach King videos. Yeah. And it was so funny because to be sitting here with you now is- It's crazy that there's hours and hours of, of videos too, because oh, yeah. I make them in like 15 to right. 30 second bite sized pieces. Yeah. And, uh, and my dream's always been to do a feature film, but I guess like when you compile them now, there's a couple feature films probably yeah. in a random order. <laughs> Is it weird for you to hear stories like that? Because it's, for us, I mean, you literally played a significant role in a in a very interesting period within our lives to where literally it became a ritual for us to come in at the end of the day. The yeah. kids would already have you on our television and we would watch you collectively. <laughs> I together. mean, it, it is weird. To it's totally weird. Um, it's less weird because you hear it all the time. Yeah. Sure. I mean, like you guys do. But yeah. it's um, crazy because I think the reason is it's not as, as strange is because I'll watch like YouTube now very selectively with my kids like. YouTube mm -hmm. in our family is very like I'm you have to be with an adult and mm -hmm. Rachel's mm -hmm. uh, to be fair not really on YouTube so it's me mm -hmm. and I'm showing them the channels that I know are family friendly yeah. uh, like right now we're watching Aquarium Info a lot mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you know the channel but yeah. it's like um, this couple and they make crazy aquarium like she'll turn her bathtub into uh, an aquarium I ecosystem mean. with like not only fish but like lizards which my kids to yeah. the two oldest boys love that. Uh, that she'll turn her bed into an aquarium and like huh. reframe it. So there's like creativity. There's like um, the whole science aspect of like fish and mm -hmm. different animals and wildlife, which they again love. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll sit and like watch them. And so I guess it's a it's strange that like the way we program content now for at least and for my generation, uh, I'm 33, is all YouTube. Like all me and yeah. my parent friends of kids that are this age are like curating it through there's a scary thing about that mm -hmm. yeah and uh like i think actually like there's a lot of cons to that uh but there's a lot of good pros if you can do it with with them i mean i don't know maybe it's as scary as not as scary but like i don't know there, there's so much to watch it feels like if you can be a really present parent mm -hmm. and watch them watch with your kids yes mm -hmm. um i can i'm a big fan of like co-viewership mm -hmm. um back when i was studying to write um, a kid's book, I was also looking into like Blue's Clues. It was one of the briefly like a, a weird tangent in my potential career was being the host of Blue's Clues, <gasps> um, no which like I've actually never for that. really never talked about it. But like um, briefly was just early conversations talking to a team if the hosting would be a fit. And so in that, I read the founder's book about Blue's Clues and how it came to be and learned a lot about like 
some of the kids psychology and, and the importance of like, just there's different kind of entertainment um, for kids. And some of it, as you guys know, uh, on YouTube is like so bad. Mm -hmm. It's just, just because it gets retention doesn't mean it's good for them or anything. Yes. But the goal of Blue's Clues was to teach kids, um, you know, using entertainment, same with Sesame Street and all these other classic shows. Yeah. Right. And um, so I don't know, I view like, and her whole thing was co-viewership is like the way to do entertainment. Mm -hmm. Um, the best way because it shouldn't be just a babysitter for your kids and it, as easy as it is and I, I, I do that often because it's like realistically you're making dinner like we have what we kind of call our like pasta shows like we have to make a quick mac and cheese mm -hmm. what is a show we can put them down for 20 minutes and know that it's safe like right. You have a list of those where I'm not going to sit and watch with them, mm -hmm. but in the background, like I know what that is. It's safe. Yeah. Maybe that is our channel or, or aquarium info or whoever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but it YouTube does scare me if it is like leave your kids there. And then the next, like oh, we yeah. put on Once these kids, uh, it's called kids art hub and it's drawing tutorials and I love it. They're 10 minutes long. Mm -hmm. uh, my middle son absolutely is like becoming an amazing artist. Um, mm -hmm just because of these he does like an hour a day of them oh, wow. so he draws like six different things um and he'll stop the video but then sometimes i'll see the little like suggested videos and you're like what is suggested over there that's not even an art tutorial yeah. like, how yeah. is that a uh, link to that video yes and then i'll like quickly hide it but like that's what makes me scared yeah. right yeah, yeah you do have to be so careful we like we'll, we'll tell the kids you're allowed to watch these shows they love dude perfect they watch a lot of things. yes Eli's watched Dude Perfect go to space probably a hundred times. Which is super cool because Amazing. then like my kids are, they just watch it and they're like, wait, you can go to space? Yeah. Or like what, like, and then it opens up all these, like, I mean, honestly, for a little bit after that, my kids wanted to be astronauts. Yeah. And that is a cool thing just yeah. to talk about science and like yeah. it opens all these conversations up. Yeah. I yeah. Think you, Dude Perfect, Mark Rober. Mark yep. Rober is a great one. We we're just signed up for Crunch Labs. Nice. Yeah, I think we're nice. going to sign up for yeah. it too. Because it looks really neat, and that our kids are really into Everybody all Everybody that. that's that I've heard has purchased it said it's inc it's not like, and I, 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 you know, I don't know if you guys know Mark, but uh, no. knowing Mark, like he's not making a get, like he puts so much care and time with his team. Yeah, yeah. That team is now bigger than his um, YouTube team now. Really? No, no, so Crunch here. Labs is like a, I think a really cool product that I'm excited to get. Yeah, as yeah. homeschoolers, we're always looking for stuff like that. Anything you can do to enrich. It, yeah, I wonder. Yeah, it's probably a bit. It's probably big in the homeschool market. If I oh, had that as a homeschooler kid, I would have been stoked. Yeah. So you did a lot of home movies and stuff as a kid. You used to make films. Yeah. And is that originally what you wanted to do? Was be a film producer? Pretty early on, because I saw like movies like Jurassic Park. Yeah. We were a big. Um, I don't know if you guys remember Blockbuster, and oh, yeah. we had yeah. one called Hollywood Video. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's Pacific Northwest. Yeah. That was, I think it was only the Northwest. <laughs> yeah. Um. And so we would go to Hollywood Video like every, it was usually Thursday or Friday night and then go pick up the movies and then, because I can't remember, but it was like you had them for a certain amount of days, like mm -hmm. two days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you started paying fees. So it was after church on Sunday, we would drop them back off yeah. and then go back later on Friday. But that was so fun to like go through. And it's, that's the one thing I miss like for my kids is like the video experience, like seeing all the, it's one thing just to, because they, they'll sit there on our Apple TV and be like, next next swipe mm -hmm. and like they're only going to see four thumbnails at a time yeah. Yeah. but i love in the store it's like overwhelming you yeah. see thousands of movie titles nostalgia and you're like i want what's this one about and you turn yeah. around there's more photos about it mm -hmm. and you read it yeah um and then i also miss like toys r us oh, just, yeah. just for the smell. experience of like walking in yeah. and seeing like a huge archway of toys yeah. everywhere yep. <laughs> Uh, they had you walked in. It was those retro colors with the giraffe painting. Yeah, and, and Toys R Us had a smell. Was like, there a smell? I don't remember the like smell. A, <laughs> there was like a toy smell. Like I think it just smelled like plastic and rubber. Yeah, like the balls that were right there. They had the big ball wall, yeah. and yeah, I love Toys R Us. No, it's all the good stuff. We always tell our kids, you guys missed out on the good stuff. Going to the movie store yeah. and, and hoping that there was the movie behind it because you knew it was in stock. Yes, they have mm -hmm. the little pamphlet of like what yeah. it was or the empty VHS cover. Yep. Yeah, and the, the DVD squeaky cover. empty case. Oh, it was so great. Yeah, and so that's what got me into film because we would go there. And I don't know, my parents were like pretty bad at stop letting us not watch something. Like <laughs> I, kept, I, yeah. I think I probably picked out Jurassic Park or something. Um, yeah. But, or either way, like we watched it mm -hmm. when I was three and a half and <laughs> it made an impression on me. And what was cool, because um, back then they would do a lot of behind the scenes that were baked into the VHS right at the end. It would mm -hmm. have like these 
15 minute featurettes mm -hmm. about the filmmaking process. And so I, the one that played after uh, Jurassic Park was like Spielberg, Spielberg. with mm -hmm. um, ILM and their team and like how they made these rubber um, dinosaurs and animatronics yeah. and like with yeah. with Winston and, and the team. And so I was fascinated about like that was it all of a sudden like I don't know if it clicked when I was three, but it like made sense that there was um, not that it was a job, but it was a thing you could do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that you could like craft this, and it yeah. was a uh, it was in a way kind of like theater. Right. And so I fell in love with that, and then my parents did have a home video camera, so I started using that. And I luckily had three younger sisters who were my actors. That's and I was perfect. Like, and, they, and they thought that was cool, so we yeah. they were in the videos, and and we were just making like kind of like what. I would tell to other creators like at this event um, who were like, what, like, what do I do to be a YouTuber? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing I was doing back when I was a kid, which is like on Friday through Sunday, make videos, yeah. show your family and rinse and repeat. Like you do that hundreds and hundreds of times. Yeah. But our kids do that too. And it's really funny. They make us sit down and they're so excited to present it. That's the best, best part. Yeah. Like now it's kind of weird that the videos get posted. Yeah. At least for my career now is like I don't have the theater experience yeah um and so you're not getting the reactions you mm -hmm. can see retention curves yeah. and all that on the back end but it doesn't it's not the same as like sitting your family down and watching mm -hmm. the videos yeah yeah very true that's true and it and you're presenting it yeah you're presenting it in person like the, I made this for you yeah and and, and, and watching your parents like oh, you know and there's <laughs> something I think important about that at least for like crafting the stories like when I'm editing uh, a family vlog that will pay like every year I play a, um, like a 22, 25 minute video of like the year recap, which is all my iPhone footage or all my camera footage oh, for my nice. family, like all curated yeah. in little chapters. But I know the exact buttons to hit to make my mother-in-law cry. <laughs> I know the exact clip to make Rachel cry um, or to make one of them laugh. So it's v highly curated for that audience, yeah. Yeah. which is my favorite part. Like it's different making YouTube stuff when you don't know what necessarily will hit or it's more to a general audience. Right. Yeah. But I think the thing that applies to me is that you can still think of a person and be like, I want this to hit for them. Like I'm sure you know editing what like it, when you show, do you watch the edits before they go out? I do. The night generally. before. Yeah. yeah. The night before. Well, so there's no time for notes at that no, point, right? No, I you're know. Just like, I'm always like, please watch it you're just like, You're just like, this is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Life gets busy. Yes. I know. He always watches it the night before, and I'm like, you know, it's done. You can watch it. Like, so do you get, a, like, how do you react to watching the cuts? It's always very personal for me. So maybe, you know, it's a different experience right? as opposed to somebody that's just coming across it on YouTube. But I, I part of the reason I do watch it the night before is because I fully entrust her and her skills and, yeah. and her edit, her eye and everything. And she can attest to this, Novea, you can chime in here. So oftentimes when I watch, um, so she does a thing where she kind of wraps up every episode with with uh, her own words and uh, sentiments and her own takeaways from whatever it is that we experienced that week. And yeah. so oftentimes it brings me to tears and it's- uh, That part at the end. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you probably know, like you have a good sense, or do you think about that when you're editing? Like what will make your- <laughs> like, for me. Yeah, well, if it makes Jeremy cry, then it usually makes a lot of our audience cry. So we get a lot of like Doesn't tears over here. Doesn't take much to make here. me cry. Yeah. Um, anything with the kids, I think talking yeah. about the kids growing up or time passing, anything where you talk hmm. about the passage yeah. of time seems to just reflect, everybody can relate to that. Yeah. Because I mean, you know, now, I mean, your kids are still little, but it goes so fast so and fast. everyone says that, but. And, but you don't realize it probably until maybe right around now is the first time my six and a half year old mm -hmm. is like, whoa, that did go by fast. Yeah. Yep. We were just counting the summers. Like we have eleven more summers here yeah. with him. Like it just starts to become, and it's out of the stage where you're like, you're driving me crazy. Yeah. Yes. Like now yeah. you're like becoming a conscious human being that mm -hmm. we can yeah. have a version of a conversation with. Yeah, it's it's yeah. a really interesting thing to experience and go through. And Nave, our oldest, is turning eighteen next year, and it's it's just so. So surreal. We have conversations. We just had one last night about, you know, the whole era of co-sleeping with our kids in bed and, yeah. and having, you know, to do diaper changes in the middle of the night and all that. And, and yep. just in the blink of an eye, you have an adult child all of a sudden. So, yeah, a lot of uh, our reflections on that make me emotional. People yeah. would be telling that to me in the grocery store. And I was always confused by it. They'd yeah. be coming up and being like, even like as of a year ago, and like, this is the best time of your life with the mm -hmm. kids. Like, don't forget, forget yeah. it. And like, mm -hmm. they're going to grow up so fast and it'd be like, in the heat of the moment, you're like, yeah, yeah, come yeah. on. Like, it's, it's hard it, to process that. 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think, yeah, that's my advice because our baby now is eight and it, you are in the best time of your life. Mm, yeah. You are in, and Rachel is in her happiest time ever. Yeah. People are like, wait till you become a grandma and everything. I'm like, no, it's when you're a mom and you have these little kids and they're little and you just get to do all that fun stuff. That is when you're a little girl, that's the stuff that you think about. Like, I'm yeah. going to have these little kids. I'm going to make Christmas morning special and I'm going to make Easter morning special. And, yep. and then it goes so quick. And now I've got teenagers and they don't get as excited about lollipop <laughs> gardens on Easter yeah. morning. And it's like those days are in the past. And I know mm. those were, that was it. Those were the years yeah. that when I'm really old, I'm going to reflect on those. So yeah, you guys soak it in, drink it in, breathe it in. Okay. Love every minute. <laughs> yeah. The best advice I got was someone said, you know, when your kids are driving you absolutely crazy, picture yourself when you're 80 and then say, you could go back to that moment right. just for then would, you know, and you would give anything to go back to that moment to have your kids little again, all in one house. Yeah. So I just, we're getting ready. We've been a family of six for a long time and it's ending. And now, now. you're going to be fine. Like it's family of five. Mm. Are you going to college? Nice. So it won't be too bad. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're easing out of it yeah. by just moving her next door. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like my big fat Greek wedding where they just built buys yep. for the house next door. <laughs> well, I thought she was going to call it to the way you no. guys, like leaving the house the way you guys are describing It's so weird it. though. She has her driver's I, license now and she leaves the house and she can be gone all day. Gone, and it's, just, yeah. it's definitely been a period of adjustment for us. So yeah. yeah. But it's, uh, it's, it's all good things. We're very, very blessed. But yeah, I mean, she's getting more and more into her own YouTube. So it's just going to yeah. be a matter of time before she's like, I'm moving to L.A. or I'm moving to Coeur d'Alene. Yep. I'm just, I'm, bye. Yep. I'm, we're leaving next month. Mm -hmm. She right. must be an extra in one of your videos. Nice. I start, <laughs> hey, I started as an extra in a TV show called Leverage. Oh, really? no kidding. Yep. I was a prisoner. Oh, that's so cool. Too Do funny. You, yep. Our kids were excited to see that you got credit in Zootopia. And then they, they remembered they were like, oh, my gosh, yeah. When he goes out of the jail and he doesn't have clothes on, he's like, no, because Zach did that. I was like, yeah. That's so funny that they know that section because <laughs> when we watched in the theater, we missed it. Oh, oh really? really? It's such a short line. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, yeah, they were like, he only said, like, one thing. Or um, I sit, I'm like, it's the first scene when you're back in the Zootopia um, police station and I'm getting arrested. Of course, my character would be getting arrested. <laughs> and it's like, uh, I think I'm a wolf. Mm -hmm. But I'm muzzled up and it's like, he bore his teeth first. <laughs> like Literally, that's the line. It's a cool experience. <laughs> and so you cool. can miss it. We went to the premiere and I remember Rachel didn't know what the line was or anything. And so when it came on, we like passed it. And I was like, yeah. And she's like, what? <laughs> You're like, no. I was like, no. <laughs> and then again, we watched it at home and she missed it again. Too funny. Oh, my but gosh. Yeah. Yeah. And our kids caught it. They were like, because they remembered your short of doing that. So, yeah. Yeah. They were like, yeah, that's so funny. But yeah. So you and Rachel also did the Amazing Race. Yeah. We did the race. Yeah. What was that? Amazing like? Race is crazy. Well, you know, we were just watching the new season and um, that came out a few days ago. And we were like, this is, would you do this again? And I think for a long time we were like, no, but I, yeah, there's something very fun and nostalgic about it now. Yeah. Because yeah. um, it was probably almost, almost 10 years ago, mm -hmm. maybe eight, nine years ago. But um, basically we were on a season where, they were actually doing like an influencer season. They, I think the show, I don't know if it was, I know the, the viewership was like dwindling a little bit. Hmm. So they just wanted to shake it up and try something new. Right. So they got a bunch of online creators and influencers. And so um, we had applied um, and they were like, we went in the runnings and basically you do a ton of like pre-work interviews. Mm -hmm. They measure your, you go into for like a week, um, be way before you're actually like officially cast just to see if you're mentally okay for the show. Hmm. Cause it puts you through some like, I mean, it's like a very exhausting show. Yeah. Um, you're shooting for 30 days pretty much wow. straight if you make it to the last episode. Yeah. Um, and so even if you get it halfway, like 15 days of that is pretty crazy. Cause you're not on, um, you can't have your phone with you. There's no internet access. You don't really know what's going on in the world wow. besides reading newspapers in the airport. Wow. Um, also because you're just so focused, but they, they don't want you distracted. Yeah. And um, and they don't want you with electronic devices being able to cheat or pre-plan mm. anything. Oh, yeah. But I always wondered going into the show, you know, 
there's got to be something that's rigged. Like there's got to be, because you watch it from your living room and you're like, even when you watch Survivor 2, you're like, there's no way that storyline just happened. Like, yeah. is that a producer behind the scenes like telling him to say something or mm-hmm. like pushing him over the edge? Yeah. But it's kind of weird. Like the show is very hands off. They have, it's just such an oiled, smooth machine mm-hmm. now that you're with a camera person and an audio person. And that's who you're with. Like there's no producers with you. Mm-hmm. You'll see them at challenges. Like producers are there making sure the rules are being followed. Yeah. Um, cause they're su- like sticklers for the rules, which is great. Cause it's also a competitive show. So yeah. like, you don't want any cheating, but we were like always waiting for like, where's that producer note going to come from? Or like, how are they going to get the drama? But it just naturally evolves. Like when you put two people who have some sort of relationship yeah. in these highly, like you just get tunnel visioned, um, in these tight pressure situations, you're going to have your little explosions. Mm-hmm. Like it just, it's going to, and also the, I mean, the trick that we learned is like, they don't feed you, um, oh. besides when you finish, but like a leg of the race could be three days of like air travel. Like if you're oh counting gosh. travel time. Yeah. And so you're eating like airplane food, mm. uh, or finding food somewhere, but you're not spending your money to get food because it's a risk of, um, I don't know if they talk about it on the show anymore as much, but they used to say like for this leg of the race, you have $88 and 21 cents. It's like a very specific amount. And so you're always wondering like, is that for the taxi or oh. is that for, um, and like, if you don't have enough for the taxi, then, then what are you gonna do? Cause you can't, you're not allowed to beg on the show. So you want to hold on to it. Yeah. And yeah. so you're very scared about your money. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, and so we never spent a dime. Like I think at one point we went in with all the teams in an airport in Europe somewhere and we were like, Hey, if everyone does it, we're all down to do it just cause we'd be in the yeah. same uh, dollar amount. But is everyone down to buy one cheeseburger from McDonald's mm. and everyone said yes. And so we all did it. <laughs> but like, it was one of those things we wouldn't do if somebody had an advantage because yeah. it's still a game at the yeah. end of the day. But all the contestants, I just remember that cheeseburger tastes like McDonald's was the best food I ever had yeah. at that moment. To and, be fair, uh, they're pretty good. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, they're good. And, uh, but when you're really hungry, oh, things yeah. elevate. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. you know, I did a trek through the desert a couple years ago. And the water that I had at the very end was like, I would have paid thousands of dollars for that water. Mm -hmm. And it tasted like the purest Fiji water or whatever. It it was like, (laughs) you know, probably some Nestle water somewhere. But um, was that for like an an endurance event? It was like an endurance event challenge. Um, I try to do these things with my friends once a year, just kind of like a crazy, um, we kind of call them Masogis, but it's like a once a year event that you even if you had a terrible year, you'd remember that because you did that event. Mm-hmm. Whether you failed or you you made it, it's not about finishing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's about trying to finish. And like, it should be something that you potentially could fail. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. It's a good way. It's like a physical way to benchmark the year, yeah. or bookmark the year. Yeah. Um, this year. So this year's is happening in a couple of weeks. It's the Iron Man, oh, okay. which I've never, it's going to be uh, like a. Uh, I don't know the full swim distance, but it's a big swim. It's a hundred something mile bike ride and then a marathon. So, so you've been training for that clearly. I have been doing a little running (laughs) and cycling. Wow. Yeah. Wow. The swim has got to be the hardest part, right? Well, for me, I can't swim. That will will be, (laughs) it'll it'll all be, it'll all be the hardest part. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. Is your family going along to cheer Uh, you on? Rachel's going to go cheer me along. Um, and I'm doing it with a buddy. So nice. Yeah, it's just cool. it'll be we'll have, we'll have whether I finish or not. It'll be one of those things that I'll remember this year. Yeah, I always well, love that event down in Hawaii on the Big Island. Yeah, I mean in on Kona. Yeah, it's, yeah, uh, yeah, and that's what the championship of it, right? Right, like, right. I always best. like watching the uh, NBC recap mm-hmm. of it because yeah. the storylines that they pull out are just so it's, impactful. Yeah, and it's just, they do seeing those people cross the finish line just absolutely exhausted in the triumph that they, they yeah they get to feel. It's just, and there's something emotional. Oh. Like yeah, when absolutely. you push yourself that oh, yeah. physically hard, yeah, yeah. like your body has response mm-hmm. where you just start crying like kind of uncontrollably. Yeah. It's like, a, I don't know if your body can't hold in the emotions anymore or what, right. but right. Yeah. it is a pretty universal yeah. feeling. That would make sense. Like you're too exhausted to put on any maybe, kind of front. Maybe that's it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just, like a lot of people lose control of their bowel, bowels yeah. too. So that would be horrible. Crawl yeah. to the finish line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be like, don't film. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm sure Rachel will be filming for Instagram. Yeah. I'll be like, don't post this. 
<laughs> he did great, however. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a photo, like, very curated. Yeah. The usual. Era. Yeah. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, that would be horrible. Yeah, but I know that happens. What's the most difficult physical thing you guys have done? Ooh, is it building? Is it like? Because is it building? No, not for me. Okay. It's not. I have a, a clear event that pops in my mind. It's being getting OC sprayed in the police academy mm. when I was going. Through is that, that pepper spray? Pepper spray. Yeah, it was. Horrible. And then you have to like run and Horrible. read and like you have to. Oh, read they make you do something after. So they oh, have yeah. you stand there with your eyes closed and they count to three. You hit three. You pop your eyes open. You literally have to hold your your eyelids Ugh. apart while they spray you for one, two, three, four, five seconds. You cannot see a thing, and you were just in absolute both your eyes misery. Both your eyes, and then there is a a, a gauntlet of things that you have to to get through um, taking somebody into custody. You actually have to recite a really long last name and read that off to a dispatcher phonetically. Um, you get into a wrestling match. There's, there's a series of things that you have to do and you're just an absolute what? misery. What, you have to wrestle somebody? Oh yeah, yeah. And, and it's, <laughs> Who it's, has also been pepper sprayed or they're, they're it was, not? I think it was a TAC officer from my academy. It's like um, they definitely have the, they're, they're. Yeah, they're just trying to push you to, you know. Um, and is it a group of you doing it at once? It was our entire class. I got to experience it together, but you're going one at a time. And so if you don't hold your eyelids open, which I didn't because instinctually it's just, you know, you want to get away from right. it and shut your eyes. They, they wait till you, you make an effort to finally crack. Oh, which makes it way worse because you're already worse. in pain yeah. and you're getting double oh, the dosage. Yeah. Horrible. So I got it, I got it twice and I, I made it all the way through. And I, and I think the worst part was actually once, once I no longer had a task that I had to uh, get through. I became so fixated and focused on the pain. So, wow. um, and it was, it literally felt like my face is on fire. My eyeballs were burning too. I can't even describe what it's like, but it's, it's, wow. a, it's a horrible pain. Yeah. So that'd be it for me. That sounds terrible. I don't know. I think maybe I've just kind of gone. Childbirth? Oh yeah. Oh, I had a home birth. <laughs> home birth. It's funny how people just forget about <laughs> yeah. childbirth. Yeah. I know. I didn't even think of that as a, yeah, we had Eli at home. Okay. And he was three weeks overdue. So he was a nine, eight and Jeez. I'm like, I'm not a very big person. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that was, and he had thrown his back out that day. So he was laying flat on the ground. Like I can't move. And I'm like, what? I'm three weeks overdue. So <laughs> you're like, you have to help me. <laughs> I know. I was like, you are like my, my birth coach. Did or you whatever. have a dual? Is a dual all right? No, I didn't. We just had a midwife that okay. came and yeah, she came. I yelled at her. Um, cause you know, That's you, to just, be expected. you go primal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to be alone. Like a hurt animal. Yeah. I just kept locking myself in the bathroom and yelling at everyone to leave me alone and get away. <laughs> so, oh, interesting. Yeah. I don't know. And then afterwards I was like, that was beautiful. My <laughs> advice, like <laughs> the yeah. Instagram photos again. Yeah. Same thing. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, well, yeah. And it's funny because we got zero photos, no video of right. it or anything. Different because time. It was, yeah, it was a different mm -hmm. time. I mean, you didn't think to capture that. Now we'd probably have like a videographer there. Yeah, but it's family content's weird. Like, do you ever think that you'll you'll venture more into that, or are you gonna keep it pretty separate? I don't think so. Um, I keep it pretty separate just because I like. I don't know. I don't know how how you guys do it, or any family does it. Like, oh. there's something about f coming home and it's like private. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not a camera. Mm -hmm. um, but I also think that's because the other aspect of my life is so public. Yeah. So it's like having that place to, which maybe is your space for you guys. Like imagine there's not like fans no. coming out of the property too much. No. no, every once in a while. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's a hard, it's a hard thing. I think what you do is, is right and smart because when you make your life content yeah all of a sudden the lines start to blur and when you're not filming you feel guilty like oh they're doing something so cute we should be filming this yeah but when you're filming it huh. you feel guilty because right. you're like i shouldn't be filming this mm -hmm. yeah i should just be absorbing this mm -hmm. so there's always guilt and there's never a clear line yeah and i just don't feel like your family and your life should ever become um monetized in that way because it's sure. so hard to separate mm -hmm. it yeah so we try to be really intentional with Sometimes if we do a birthday and we show our kids blowing the candles out, that's the second time that they blew their candles out. Yeah. Because you have the we, real one. I want to watch it not through the lens. I don't want to watch my kids grow up through the lens of a yeah. camera. And I don't want them to grow up always with a camera in their face. So we have yeah. a lot of rules. Like if they're crying or they're hurt, you do not film. That camera yep. gets shut off. Right. Um, I mean, we can get a million views with our son falling and he split his eye open. He needed to go. Like if we showed oh. a thumbnail and people do. Right. Like we totally could have 
taken that and but there was no way that we're going to film that and he was upset and scared and so you have to you have to have these lines and these rules yeah. but our kids they get filmed maybe 0.05% of their day and yeah. the rest of the time it's go play yeah. and that's a lot of reason why we don't have them build because we don't want them to be constantly right. filmed and so it, it's hard my thing um it's like i love the candid style videos where mm-hmm. It's like the closest thing to real life when they don't know they're being filmed. Yeah. At least my kids, especially the oldest, like they know when they're being, yeah, both of them, they know when they're being filmed. Mm-hmm. So they'll like act a little different, yeah. right. goofier, mm-hmm. yeah. um, which is cute still, but it's not like what I'm trying to capture. Yeah. Um, so I'll do a lot of things where before we go into the playroom, I'll put the camera in there um, and just let it roll a wide shot. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also like I, I figured it'd be fun. You know, again, those aren't going out anywhere publicly. Right. Mm-hmm. But it could be fun. I don't know. I, I picture this weird scenario um, that's very specific where I'm like 85 years old, nursing home status. Like, you know, I'm sitting in my wheelchair or whatever. And I'm like, oh, man, this is so cool on my hard drive. I have like us playing for an hour as kid uh, with my kids. Yeah. And just like, I don't know, watching that, as weird as that sounds. Yeah. Or like having these long, like the clips I'll put, because I'll forget the camera's there too, but I'll go in before we go into the Lego play, playroom and put the camera on a shelf that so they, they don't see it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I always sometimes mention like, hey, we're filming, but usually I'm trying to capture as raw as possible. Right. Um, like them being their regular goofy selves, yeah, not performing. And so, um, you know, I'll put the camera in different spots throughout the day or uh, a couple times a week just to capture these. Mo- or them swimming is a good one. Yeah. Like it's so fun to put a tripod and a camera out there and after the first minute, like, sure, they've done backflips for the camera, mm-hmm. but then they forget it's rolling. Yeah. And then we get real life. Yeah. And, and I've forgotten it's rolling, and that's just the fun, you know, memories. And those ones I, I haven't gone back and edited. They just, like, live in an archive of, that's like, great. maybe someday. I don't know if yeah. I'll ever go back. Yeah. But, like, at least they're they're there. That's, that's awesome. That's so smart to intentionally capture those everyday mundane. Those are the best things that mm-hmm. – I'll, I'll film the kids from a distance when I just catch him doing something weird. Eli wears a space suit, helmet, everything, yeah. and then he'll go water the garden at Pluto time <laughs> because apparently like when the sun sets, that's what it looks like on Pluto. Oh, cool. And so that's he's very like, creative. it's Pluto yeah. time and yeah. he puts on his whole outfit and then he'll go do his chores dressed like an astronaut for Pluto time. And so like I'll film from a distance and I'm, I have to like write down Pluto time because I'll forget yeah. that 20 years from totally. now that that's what he called it. Yeah. But we just caught them. It was pouring rain. I was just trying to get a shot of the rain coming down uh, on the house. And all of a sudden the Eli and Kira came out and he threw his coat. He was trying to wear his coat, Mm. but give her the hood and they were walking, but it was such a gentlemanly thing to do while trying to like stay dry himself. But I'm just like panned over and like zoomed in. It was the cutest moment I've ever captured of them. I love that. There's something special about um, this national geographic style um, long lens on your kids or something that feels yeah. um, like they're truly being themselves because mm-hmm. versus a wide angle and you're up close mm-hmm. yeah. and they know the camera's there and, and you have to be pretty close to get anything. Yes. Um, but I do that a lot. I, I'll throw in my 70 mil um, and be really far away. Like yeah. they're like sniffing dandelions or like, uh, like, you know, throwing apricots trying to feed the dog, like really far away yeah. Yeah. and just getting those moments and like following and panning and, you can like maybe barely make out what they're saying, but usually not at yeah. all. It's just like distant screams. Yeah. Uh, and there's something really sweet about yeah. seeing that from the distance. There is. It's a feel. It it's is. real and yeah. authentic. Yeah, yeah. you get yeah. that deep blur behind them too. So all the noise gets drowned out and then it's just on them. And Sometimes I'll narrate them like a Nat Geo kind of like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Liam is out. Um, what is he even doing? You know, that's really funny. But it's uh, fun. he, is, he is stalking his prey. Yeah. It's like a grasshopper. Yeah. Early cavemen here playing, learning how to play with sticks. <laughs> <laughs> There's kids are the best. Like, I don't know, maybe just us as parents think that, you know, kids are the best to watch, but I just think they're so fun to watch. They're so creative. They're, they're the best. They, of they all are the of best. Us. And it's like, because they're, I don't even know what it is, but my kids just feel like unbashful about yeah. anything. They'll confidently say something. I don't think my kids yet know to censor themselves. Yeah. Um, so they just say whatever comes. It's like the most truthful version of a human, I think, because yeah. you can say it's pure. whatever comes to mind, even yeah. though it's not really thought out right. yeah. um, or even a good thought necessarily. But like, I know I'm going to get the truth from them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so that's that's fun. It's refreshing. 
it is refreshing. Yeah. Yeah. Kids are refreshing. So yeah. you were homeschooled for a significant portion of your adolescence, correct? Um, almost my entire life. Uh, I went to pi- private school when I was in eighth grade and ninth grade. Okay. Didn't love it a ton. So we went yeah. back to uh, homeschool. Okay. But we did do in high school, uh, I would go to a morning like choir specifically because uh, I wanted to, my parents wanted me to compete in um, piano competitions. Oh, okay. And so to qualify in the state competitions, you had to go to a public like music school for right. one hour. Right. You know, so I did that. And then um, it also worked out because my mom didn't want to teach chemistry or physics at that time. Mm. Um, and so she was like, you can also go to, to choir and then go physics, chemistry, math, and then come home by lunch. Yeah. So that was my, and it was a pretty small high school up in, uh, in Westland area. Okay. But yeah, I, I, I loved that combo of it. Like yeah. homeschool on the farm, going for school, come back and I would get my homework done for in like two hours or right. less and then have yeah. the whole day to do more piano practice or filmmaking or whatever. But my family's rule, which it was my favorite rule and the reason I probably love homeschooling is like once you get your work done, which is up to you, mm-hmm. you you can do whatever you want. Like, yeah. yeah. And I, I'd be like, wait, you're telling me if I wake up at 5 a.m. and get all my homeschooling done by like 7 a.m. I have the whole day. Yeah. Like, it's sure yeah. if you want to do that. And so it was like really empowering. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like the same feeling I had when I got my driver's license at 15 or 16. It was that feeling like, yeah. oh, I can do this now. Like I'm in a, a version of an adult. Yeah. But you're given that as like you know, an eight year old or seven year old. Um, Mm -hmm. the downside I think of homeschooling was I knew how to like get my mom to like get, I could get out of things. So I'd be like, (laughs) I'm like really, I wouldn't play the sick card because she would know because I'm at home, but it was other things like, Oh, I'd like almost getting her to help me give me the answers. Yeah. (laughs) Like I just, I really can't think right now. Like, like, and then she'd be like, well, it's, you know, like, and then like, end up doing my homework somehow for me yeah. um, or like showing me the answers quicker. Mm. But I knew how to milk that card. That sounds familiar. I think I've been being boozled this whole time because <laughs> Eli's always like, mom, I don't understand. And and I'm like, but we've, we did this yesterday. Yeah. That that's, makes sense. that's bamboozlement. Yeah. Probably. So yep. it's great to hear that you were, uh, you were able to pursue your passions because of your homeschooling schedule and all the freedom and oh, flexibility. A hundred percent. It would just, yeah, sure. There's totally ways to do it yeah. and not homeschooling, but mm-hmm. it's, even my kids now like are not even in it's what first grade and they don't get home till three. Yeah. We do homework for an hour and a half and one does some speech therapy. And so like, it's like then dinner time mm-hmm. and then we're going to play for a couple hours, like two hours before they go to bed. And then mm-hmm. so like, I can already see how like the regular school just takes all their, mm-hmm. all their time. And, uh, I don't think, I don't, I don't think I, I'm definitely not going to homeschool them. I think the homeschooling has to come from somebody who's like, that's their thing, like for sure. Interesting. Yeah, I'm not gonna be like Rachel. You should homeschool. <laughs> yeah, she definitely doesn't want to homeschool. Burden her. Yeah. But, yeah, you yeah. have to really you want it. You have to <laughs> like that has to be a passion. Yeah. You know? Same as being a, any other career or YouTuber, especially like you have to want to yeah. be a filmmaker for at the sure. end of the day. Yeah. yeah, you have to really want it because it's not always beautiful and graceful or fun. Yeah. And so if you don't have a like this is my mission and I have to do this for myself, then yeah, you'll quit. It is one of those corners of Instagram though, where I think it can, I'm curious if you guys think this, but it seems like it could pull you in as this like beautiful, kind of easy, ideal way to to like raise your family. At least when I'm over the shoulder looking at what Rachel looks at. I'm like, oh man, homeschooling looks super easy in that, mm. like in their their feed. Like maybe maybe you should do right. it, you know. Right. But obviously, like I was homeschooled, so I know it's not. Yeah. Like yeah. maybe you could put filters over it and show certain things. But I remember homeschooling for my mom was like she was so good at it. Yeah. But it's still tough. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And it's and it doesn't look graceful like it does on Instagram. I see all these different homeschool moms on Instagram, and they'll have like their kids are all sitting quietly with like, like the little guaranteed. Smile. That didn't last more than five <laughs> seconds. Yeah, that was a photo. Yeah, and it was probably like, everyone look at their book. There's a reason that wasn't a video. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. These still shot photos. And I think it starts like that in the beginning of the year, and then it kind of like goes to junk as the year goes on. Right. It gets more and more lax. I mean, talk to me at Christmas time, and I'm like, ah, why? Yeah. And by the end of the year, there's never even an end. Like, this is our last day. Like, somewhere in May, it That's just sort of ends. That's the thing. <laughs> that was totally unfair about homeschooling is there was never, in, in my family, it never an end. Yeah. So, like, all my friends would be getting out of school. And that's, like, I would hear, start hearing, like, oh, whatever, it was June 3rd or whatever. 
or 22nd, they were getting out of school. I'd be like, are we getting out? And they're like, well, we're going to do like a, a summer version of it. And so it's going to be less, you're, but you're going to still have to do some workbooks. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, but yeah, you know, you'll still do two hours in the morning mm-hmm. during summer. And we're like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> but it's sunny out. It's not fair at all. Yeah. I know. Yeah. It's, it gives us a lot of time with the kids, but. That's another one of those blurred line things because then there's mom and there's teacher. Yeah. But you're always mom, so they don't listen to you like they would a teacher. Yeah. Your kids can be angels in a school, but you get them at home and they're like, well, I don't want to do math. And they're sliding down the benches. And yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it's real. Yeah. <laughs> it's not glamorous. I'm yeah. always curious, though, with somebody who's actually been through it about what their, uh, their takeaway from it was. Yeah. It's because, you know, it's, a, it's another thing that we grapple with. And, for us, especially given where we live, there are definitely social drawbacks as far as, you know, opportunities go for the kids. Right. So yeah. do, do, looking back, do you think that there was ever a time where you felt as though you were maybe a social outcast because of your homeschooling? Totally. Yeah, really. I'm still a social outcast. Yeah, really? Yeah. I mean, there's an event going on and I'm in the hotel. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I think it's, uh, I mean, I don't know if that's what homeschooling did, it could be personality too. Like yeah. my sisters are both very, um, uh, all three of them are actually pretty outgoing. Mm. And so I, and I'm the one that generally is more uh, introverted. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I don't know if it's a homeschooling thing, but you do probably tend to, I don't know. There's a lot of kids I met too that are like, I find out like you're homeschooled. Like there's no way you seem like, not that too cool is the way to say it, but like yeah. you seem too cool to be yeah. homeschooled. Yeah. Um, or like too social butterfly and like out there. Right. But no, I think it seems like uh, if your parents can, if the teacher or whoever's in charge of the programming can like get you out with other kids, I think that's important. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and or if you have siblings too, I think that's what helped me probably mm-hmm. the best is like having I don't know being a if you were alone homeschooled out in the yeah. middle of nowhere. Yeah. By yourself, it would be tougher. Yeah. But I don't know. Interesting. It's, we've found that a lot of YouTubers are more introverted. Have you found that to be the case as well? Uh, yeah. I, yeah. I don't know if that's, I would love a study on it, but I, my hunch is yes. Yeah. I think the reason may be because, uh, especially like the vlogging YouTubers mm-hmm. is it's easier to talk to the camera mm-hmm. versus a group of people or one person as an individual. Yeah. Like talking to the lens is, um, which maybe means we're all crazy. But um, <laughs> I mean, when you think about it, it's like kind some of sort weird. of like a lot of if I've ever done vlogging to a camera alone in my room, it's like a like a lot of that never even goes out because mm-hmm. it just ends up being like word vomit and yeah. um, kind of my own therapy for yeah. myself. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then I never edit it and then I move on. Right. But yeah, I feel like maybe that maybe that is a common common trait. Yeah, it's so interesting to me. Yeah, because we're extreme introverts. And then when we meet other yeah. YouTubers, they're also introverts. Mm-hmm. And we're like, is anyone out going in this group? <laughs> yeah. Like, why do we have events? If yeah. None of us want to go <laughs> at this, them. We're all just hiding in our hotel rooms. Like, is there people out there? Like, yeah, yeah, it's pretty funny. But it is something that we've noticed. There are outgoing YouTubers and Instagrammers, yeah. but there are a lot of it seems like the, the bigger the creator, the more quiet they are. I think Yeah, and there's a couple things that would I would guess are like variables that change that though is like the bigger you get, the more like even just coming into the lobby today, it's like, oh, everyone wants to say hi. Mm -hmm. But then like even that by itself, if you're an extrovert, maybe an extrovert would love it. But Mm -hmm. I feel like you're just like not a safe zone right now, causing a riot, need to get to elevator. Mm -hmm. Like it gets very uh like practical yeah Yeah. so i wonder if that's that's a reason yeah maybe so yeah probably and like i think also and we're nowhere near like the level of pretty much anyone at the event but when somebody wants something from you all the time like or they want to know you you wonder what you know what do you want from me or like you know you wonder do they really just want to know us and be our friend or do they yeah, and they it's a bummer to... that already has to be in the back of your mm-hmm. head just for relationships in general. Yeah. Like, yeah. You never want to think like, oh, why is this person coming up to me? Um, whether it's at an event or, um, you know, your kids are at your first day of school and it's like, well, is this yeah. person, is this parent talking to me because they know who I am mm-hmm. or is it just a random person actually just saying hi? Mm-hmm. The fact that I'm thinking that that is like really egotistical and weird. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I have to filter that and then... Yeah. It's an unhealthy mindset. Yeah. 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 So I, I have to admit that we were thinking this to ourselves last year yeah. after we received the invite from you. Um, we were. You thought what? We didn't, we didn't know, know what, what to, to think. think. <laughs> we were we were extremely, extremely 
confused. We're like, tell what? him this. <laughs> we were driving to your house on the way. We were like, what's going on? Like, we're like, why? Why? why, why that why? I invited you over? Yeah. yeah. That's because I'm an introvert and I don't have friends. So it's like, <laughs> You're like, like fellow introverts. <laughs> I'm not looking for an answer. I'm just letting you know. Like, that's literally, yeah. literally the entire time. Yeah. Well, we're like, when what's, Zach was what's like, happening now? Go, you can go to his house for breakfast. We're like, his real house? Like, <laughs> and he's like, yeah, he's going he's gonna to have you guys over. And we're like, why? What's like, the and he was like, what do you mean, why? <laughs> like, yeah. He asked us, like, what are you, t- why are you asking That why? is like when I first came to LA and you'd go to meetings, you'd be like, wait, what's the catch? Like, what's the. Yeah. What's the business deal you're going to hear? What's the scam <laughs> you're going to get involved yes. in? Or what's in That's like, so funny. You're well, always wondering. We were like, he doesn't want anything from us. We don't have anything to like offer offer him. And, <laughs> and he, yeah, and we're like, he doesn't want our channel. Like, that's useless to him. Like, we're like, why? We were so confused. Oh, and then when we left, so we funny were more you confused. had that whole. So apologies, process. because coming yeah. away from it, we were like, that was really great. Yeah. They were really kind. And that was very normal. So next time I invite somebody over, just so I know, I should say like, I don't want anything. I no. don't want anything from you. Do you want to come over? That's a that's a total us issue or me issue. I think it's, it's, it's a, a skepticism that I live with probably. Oh, so I'm a, I'm a skeptic too, though. So yeah. that's that's funny. Yeah. Yeah, it was funny, and then when we left, we were just like, they're just super nice, normal people. Like that was so fun. That was so awesome. Well, I'm glad that was a takeaway. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you answered the door and you had your sweatpants on and. Rachel didn't have makeup and you guys were just like in your home. I'm like, this is great. Like you guys are just nice, normal people. But we had seen so many. You were so magic. Yeah. (laughs) You know, on our TV. Yeah. (laughs) That probably is a weird line. Like seeing. Well, I've had that. Like meeting. I mean, you meet celebrities and you're like, you are. We worked with um, Ed Sheeran this week. And it was like I in high school was like part of my high school and. Uh, but really, my college was narrated by a lot of his songs. Yeah. Uh, and so it's like weird when you're just talking to them. Yeah. But you have this alternate version of them, right? In right. Your, yeah. your head that, um, and they, it's it's kind of that like, what do they call it? The parasocial, is it the parasocial relationship where you know somebody really well, but then on the other end, like they it's not returned. Like when you go out to the event, there'll yes. be people who hug yeah. you and be like, they, especially with family content like yours, yeah. mm-hmm. they know you guys. Mm-hmm. And like they have cried with you. Mm-hmm. And then they are hugging you. And it's weird for you because you just not, you don't have like in a normal, healthy relationship, in real life, you guys would know the other person's yeah. you know, struggles and everything they've gone through too. But you are just, they're like, you don't even know their name. Yes. Yeah. You don't even know where they're from. You're just like trying to catch up. Yeah. Right. And yeah. they have this deep couple year long relationship, which, yeah. which is the weirdest part I think of just doing what we do mm-hmm. where, and like, I don't know if you guys have friends that do YouTubing as well, or, or if you're just kind of alone in the space, Yeah, we're alone in the but space. it's a weird, <laughs> that is one of the weird elements that it's, it is nice. Like, you know, you mentioned like, why do you come to events? And it's like to have people where you're like, you know, that weird thing that people come up to us and like you understand. cry yeah. Yeah. and then want to hug us, but we don't know them that yeah. feeling like then you can have that moment. Right. You're like, yeah, that's kind of just yeah. the job. Right. And, uh, it's fun to connect on those, I feel like, things yeah. with people. It sure. is. Yeah, it it is. And I think it's a lot of times the stuff that doesn't get discussed. Like everyone starts talking about numbers and algorithms. Yeah. And we were hearing that this so morning. Are your videos doing really bad right now? Like on just terrible <laughs> on yeah. TikTok? And like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's Well, they're just talking about stuff that's just so outside of our like 100 employees and stuff like that. And yeah. we were just like Homer Simpsoning out of the room. Yeah. Like through the little bush. Of- Did it, it? It already started today? Um, they did like a, no, they were, it was just like a little behind the scenes thing and it was a bunch of creators in a room and they all went out around and introduced mm. themselves. And of course we were like against the wall and we just got skipped over happily. <laughs> we didn't want to introduce <laughs> ourselves. You're like, we didn't go. Oh, that's fine. You guys can keep yeah. going. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I mean, it's, it's such an interesting experience just to watch other, other creators and, and I don't know, we just feel so outside of our element. And so it's nice to just have real talks about the struggles and the family stuff and well i think i mean if it makes you guys feel better uh a lot of people here feel like they're outside of their element i always feel like i'm outside my element the reason i come is just to learn and meet people Mm -hmm. um and like i'm looking i don't know it's just cool to relate to people who do the same thing in our space yeah um and learn you can learn so much from like even just i'm not even looking I actually look for more like the small channels and what's working Mm -hmm. for the under 100,000 subscribers. It's like there's so many great tidbits that I can apply to my business and it changes drastically because of the scale that we have. Mm -hmm. Um, 
you know, that small little adjustment that they found yeah. could be huge. Um, but I don't know. I think it's just curiosity that brings you back. But I don't think you guys yeah. should feel like, I think there's a lot of people who would say the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm so out of my element. And honestly, the hundred person team is kind of unrelatable to like, even me. Yeah. Like most people, it's like, it's, I think uh, every, you know, most our channels, you guys are, have, do you have a team member anymore? Or no, yet? no, no. We, we wear this all the hats. Like, yeah. So like, it's, it's just you guys. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And so like, I think that's most people here. Yeah. Maybe sure. they're just getting their first or second team member, mm -hmm. like an, or a freelance editor kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or a producer. Yeah. Last time we talked, I have a question. You were like <laughs> debating <laughs> YouTube uh, yeah. editing, uh, and like if that yeah. was going to be. And I was definitely more pushing on the side of uh, like maybe you should mm -hmm. get an editor, right? And and, and so where did I how did should. that how did that like it's been a year? Yeah. Well, we talked about it a lot. I am a creature of habit, so mm -hmm. I just went right back to my living room table yep. and continued my edit. Um, but did you get, did you, were you working with, did you get a new laptop? Yes. Okay. Right behind you. Amazing. Was, however. Was it nice? However. Don't <laughs> tell him. Go ahead. I'm scared of it. <laughs> I still. I use, use it I still for use, the podcast mm -hmm. with Premiere. Oh, great. But like, but your render time was crazy, I think, if I remember right. You were like. The render time was crazy. Really, the software I was using isn't that capable, but then I feel like our videos are so plain mm -hmm. that- Did you end like, up getting Premiere? Yeah. Do you use it? Nope. <laughs> oh, what do you use? I don't wanna tell you. Okay, well you can, <laughs> is it like a movie maker? I use Filmora. That's like a good software, right? Yeah, it works. Yeah. It's $34 a year. Hey, that's uh, <laughs> 12 times cheaper than Premiere, which is $34 a month. I use Filmora Pro. Nice. But yeah, if I tell anyone I use Filmora, it's very embarrassing. Even for like amateur, but oh, he's so mad now. He thought I was using <laughs> Premiere. Yeah, I tried. Oh, it doesn't <laughs> matter. I tried. It was so overwhelming. I think you should use whatever. Honestly, I don't even know how you're using. I've never used it, but um, that's amazing. Yeah, so um, really I don't have time to learn something new yes. as a mom of yeah. four kids and homeschooling and everything. I looked at Premiere. I pulled it up. I tried to do an integration. I'm like, I'm going to start with an integration. Is it like they carry over there? Stuff. What's it integration? Was, it was just our like our sponsor. Right. Oh, oh our like one a branded minute project. Integration. Okay, yeah. Yep, yep. Um, so I thought if I can do a one minute spot, I'll yep. learn it doing the integrations. And I sat there for like six hours. I wanted to throw the computer, and yep. I'm like, I don't understand this. Everything's foreign. Nothing moves right because I'm not even familiar with Apple products. So everything was key commands I didn't know. And I thought, no, I have to get this integration to them tomorrow. So I switched back to my little Lenovo. And never went back. <laughs> and I never, I'm like, oh, Lenovo. It's like my old doll that I just won't give up for, like the pretty yep. doll sitting there. And I'm like, no, I love this one. <laughs> if that's your thing, then that's your thing. I'm so glad this came up. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> you don't have to be and embarrassed. Like, oh, no. Wait, <laughs> no, it's no. More um, power to you using a $34 a year software. That's, yeah, it, that's whatever all. works for you. I think that's like channel. the thing, like you don't, the last thing I, I, I hate is getting advice that you're like, ah, oh, that doesn't apply to me or I don't like it just cause it works for you. doesn't mean it works, you know, like yeah, it doesn't have to, it does apply. And if I, if I wasn't a mom and I wasn't homeschooling, I could sit there and I could just dive into it quietly without an interruption every, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. You yeah. can't even get in through the intro of the tutorial. No. Yeah. And Eli, he's got all kinds of weird. Right now, he's really fascinated with North Korea. And he's asking me all these questions about North Korea. Like, yeah. every three minutes, I'm like, what is the fascination with North Korea? He's like, I can never go there. Inquisitive <laughs> homeschool kid. Yeah. Yeah. He's no. just like, I can't go there. So I need to know what they eat, what they... Yeah, so yep. I can't learn. So you're busy yet. like learning about North Korea and yeah. giving him all the details. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. I, and whatever happens to be, I don't even know what he's into. This rodeo, he's into the rodeo yep. right now, which is perfect. You guys are in Texas. Yeah, yeah. going over to Fort Worth. Yeah, and yeah I think we're gonna do that. Yeah. Go to the rodeos. Friday. Yeah. Do they actually have a live rodeo like with yeah. like, they do. wrangling bulls or whatever? They yeah, do. yeah, there's bulls and everything. So he's like, we have to go. And, and they've never. I imagine they have those up by you too, right? Oh, they do. Yeah. Yeah, and we've, you, gone, we've gone a couple times. We have weird rodeos. We have like uh, horses versus dirt bikes, and they race. What? Yeah, sounds... they barrel race, but someone's on a dirt bike and someone's on a horse, and then whoa, that sounds like very almost like redneck. It's very it is. It's redneck fun. Very, very so yeah. what is it? You you race the horse is racing the motorcycle. Yeah, yeah. 
so they like go at down the same a separate time. track. Like they're doing the barrel racing. So if you've ever seen where they go out at, from the gate, they'll go around the barrels. Oh um, wow! It'll they'll the horses will be on one side, and, and they're not know. spooked by the sounds of the. Some of them, were. yeah, some of them were for okay. sure. I mean, girls were getting thrown, and it was Whoa. a mess. It Whoa. was a good time. <laughs> good times. It was. It's good fun. Like it's good. Bonner's very that's fun. That's good, pure fun. Yeah, that's what we do on a Friday night. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's a weird version of rodeo, but it's yeah. rodeo. <laughs> so you guys will have to you'll have to make it out sometime and uh, yeah. watch dirt bikes versus horses. Yeah. That's crazy. So, yeah. Well, You're well. so what else them. has changed in uh, since I saw you guys last? What else has changed, Mama? For your, you, for you, let's talk YouTube strategy. Oh, okay. Like, oh, man. on, you guys were, so you just... You must have left and then got a Mac. Did you not have a MacBook? You had a really slow MacBook. I had a Lenovo. We did not have a, a Lenovo. MacBook, okay. Yeah. But now you have a MacBook. Still Both Mac, MacBook. Yeah. Um, so that's an upgrade. Been mm-hmm. plugging away on that. Yeah. YouTube has been um, a struggle for us, and it's not that we we are fixated with numbers by any means, but it does become discouraging when those numbers dwindle. Mm-hmm. So um, we do our best, and you know we try to focus on things from a fulfillment aspect. Yeah. I suppose. Um, and there's a lot of good to come from the channel and uh, a lot of growth. I feel like with the videos, especially a lot of improvements, I think videos have become um, more dialed in over time. Yeah. We just we just keep plugging away and do our best. We're grinders. Yeah. You know, we, we post video once a week. And you're saying. Um, I noticed you don't do shorts. No, we do. We do not do shorts. We don't do shorts because. Other people in our genre started doing the shorts when everyone else was, and we noticed their sub numbers flying, but their long form views were all declining across the board. Okay, so you just wanted to like not mess with that. Yeah, these are like they're really community based channels, and when you start pumping out stuff at them, they get Mm. mad. Like Mm -hmm. we've already seen this content, or why is it so short? They want to sit down. With their team. Yeah, that's, I mean, the kind of actually show. cool part about your audience is they're there for the long view. Right? Yeah. yeah, we actually get asked for longer videos every week. Yeah, yeah. They, your really audience short. would probably want to see a documentary. Well, so how is the podcast doing then with that? Because it is an hour or something long, hour 10. Yeah, the podcast has been great. It's kind of for our own selfish desires, quite honestly. It's it's provided us with an opportunity to speak to people like you, yeah. you know, um, and to explore different things that, that we are personally passionate about. So. Yeah. It's it's more of a passion project, I suppose you could say. I'm not I'm not too worried about the numbers there either. Yeah, um, which is how the best podcasts start, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's you know we have folks that we want to talk to and things that we want to discuss, and that's really what it's been about. And yeah. so it's 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 again, you know, we're we're, we're here sitting with you, and yeah. this is surreal again. Yeah. So. so I heard the big dream is Chip and Joanna Gaines. Chip yeah. and Joanna Gaines will be on are, next week. Couple, <laughs> we only, say that every uh, podcast that they're going to come on next week. A couple hours away. Yeah. We actually went yesterday. Did you? Yeah, we did we not, not see Chip and Joanna Gaines. <laughs> but they will be on next week. Yeah, so. it's been kind of an ongoing joke because I love all things fixer upper and yeah. stuff. I like I recognize the dishes at your house right away. I was like, <laughs> yeah, oh, you're I like, have these those. are Magnolia. Yeah. 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 And you're like, yeah, I'm not allowed to eat on these. <laughs> yeah, that's um we have everything. Like I went in the shop yesterday. I was like, I already have all this stuff. <laughs> like, I don't know why I'm here. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, so it's kind of a it's a dream, but it's I know it's not realistic, so. <laughs> oh, I think that's totally realistic. I didn't, th- I didn't think it was that crazy when you when I heard it. Ugh. I don't know that they do. I actually, when like that. when one of your titles fooled me, <laughs> was sorry it about that. One? that. <laughs> I think it was like the three three ago uh, or two ago, but it said like uh, with featuring Chip and Joanna Gaines, and yeah. I was like, oh, nice, they, they got them. Makes sense. <laughs> got them. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah, no. In your world, that's super practical. <laughs> like you could call them, and they'd be like, yeah, sure. And then, Not necessarily, but I felt like it was a good mix for, like, you guys have done, like, it, it's a great, I don't know, brand fit. Like, it yeah. makes it makes sense. It, yeah. it does make sense. You guys because are a couple. You've done home renovations. Mm-hmm. You could speak, like, their language. Yeah. Which, and honestly, not a lot of people can. Yeah. Uh, um, unless they've done that kind of on the ground work. Mm-hmm. So like yeah. uh, you guys would have a lot in common. Yeah. We're in the same place about. in life too. Their oldest is just becoming an adult and she's really struggling with yeah. that. And I was just like, Oh, I want to talk to you mama. And, uh, and they have, you know, they have a lot of faith based stuff around yeah. their channel and that's what drives our life too. Mm-hmm. And, yep. um, it, yeah, it would be, it would be fun. It's funny because here nobody knows who we are. They have mm-hmm. no idea. And they'll be like, what's your channel? And they'll pull up and they'll be like, oh, you actually have a channel. And we're yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> but when we went to Waco, we were walking around 
there, that's where we got recognized. Oh, really? As soon as we walked in, people are like, good simple living's that here. That makes sense. That makes so sense. So we're like, oh, our people are here. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's our audience. They yeah. were at Waco. Yeah. So. That's why it's a great fit. Yeah. We'll see. And that's why it will happen someday. <laughs> Probably next week. <laughs> yeah, next week. We say that every podcast. That yeah. Next week, they're going to be here if they're not too busy. They're going to serve us with like a cease and desist eventually. <laughs> <laughs> like, Well, it's either it's either that or they, they uh, come on the podcast. Yeah, they yeah. cave and come yeah. on. And either way, you made it. Because they yeah. know who you are. For I sure. mean, because a cease and desist costs a decent amount of money at their level to do. That's what we oh, said. okay. That's a couple. I mean, just, One just time and effort that they've had to think about. It's acknowledgement either <laughs> yeah, way. It's acknowledgement. You know? So, yeah. We'll feel like we're no longer allowed to But you, I don't think you won't get the cease and desist unless you do something creepy. <laughs> no, like, no. Who's your, your dream podcast? Um, I don't know. There's not one person in particular. Um, and it doesn't have to be anybody of, you know, notoriety or recognition yeah. you know we've had a lot of discussions about this just anybody with a very fascinating story especially if it's somebody who i feel we had sarah weaver on from ruby ridge i don't know if you're familiar mm -hmm. with that situation story yeah. but i just she had such a harrowing story to tell and it's something right. that i feel is so worthwhile to hopefully you know if we have the opportunity to help share that with yeah. with yeah. new folks it's it's uh it's it's great for us to just serve as a vessel to others yeah. in yeah. that case. Untold so, stories. Like yeah. I think that was such a God thing because she's been wanting to tell her story for so long, but all she gets is uh, documentaries, television mm -hmm. documentaries, and then they were carving out all of her message all, all, of faith yeah. and forgiveness. Yeah. And yeah. that's what her story is. Right. They just want the plot points that are yep. interesting. Yeah. They want know. the drama, but they didn't they didn't her whole story is forgiveness mm -hmm. and she just wanted to get that out so badly yeah. and we're like oh you can come here and just talk which makes this format so great for that yeah you know yeah you can speak freely openly for an extended period of time and hopefully people make it all the way through but yeah yeah it's great so that's cool i mean like so the what i'm hearing is the purpose of the podcast could be um not just to get you know people with no notoriety and mm -hmm. big names but like to give yeah voice it's, to the it's voiceless. more purpose yeah. driven yeah. Um, it's, it's not about, that. not about the numbers. Yeah. So yeah. Like we never really, like if we do talk to YouTube people, it's like, we don't want to talk about the algorithm and thumbnails yeah, right. and all that stuff. Like, and that's not what your audience you is going to like, yeah. want to yeah. sit there and listen to, right. They want to hear people's. Yeah. But even with you, I'm sure you get hit and peppered with the same questions all the time. Sure. And you know, it's, we're, we're curious about you and, um, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot to you. There's a lot more to you than, yeah. than right. these vines or shorts right. or, you know, all the, the celebrity videos that you make. Yeah, you get so. used to the same PR questions yeah, or yeah. interview questions. And I remember one that threw me um, just because you get and not that you're doing the same thing over and over, but it does become like, um, you know, when you have the same question a thousand times, you're going to just go to this natural answer that yes, it, whatever it turns to autopilot. Yes. And I was doing this one Q&A at a school and the kid like out of nowhere kind of was like, um, what's a what's a prayer request I could be praying for you and your family right now? And uh -huh. like, I remember like for a second, I was like, oh, I've never heard that. Like mm. out of the thousands and thousands of questions, yeah. the way that one was phrased mm -hmm. and like a prayer request, like it actually like snapped me out of Makes my, you stop and yeah, yeah. Your, your, yeah, your rhythm of like yes. answering how long a video usually takes and all that stuff. Yeah. 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 yeah it's a great question. But yeah. So we know, so you and Rachel are Christians. Yep. So how does that, how does that dictate your content or, or, Pull back your content or people you collaborate with do you just keep business and and that separate or do you try to i i think it all merges like i think if jesus were here in person doing his ministry like it would it wasn't like there's two lives a business life and a family life i think mm -hmm. it's all all together um i think it plays out in a lot of different ways like um a lot of team my team started out all as believers and christians just because i was at biola and that's where mm -hmm. i built the team it was like friends of friends, you know, um, can you help me on my projects? And so it was naturally like Christians. Right. Um, but over the years, it's been like, uh, it's I don't know the percentages, but it's not all believers. And I think it's kind of cool because, you know, either I'm coming to an event like this, but I'm traveling with somebody who may not be a believer mm -hmm. and, and we'll have it'll like random conversations and just doing life with people every day uh, in the studio. You're going to have like a lunch conversation that's going to turn to more, you know, real life and like how are they actually doing and, you know, maybe they're hoping whatever they they have faith in is not the truth. It's not, maybe that's why, you know, things are going, they are. And um, there's just a lot of cool conversations yeah. amongst the team. So I, I don't think it's like a separate, you know, at work it's non-Christian or just Christian and then at home it switches on or off. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, we, we put our kids in a private Christian school mm -hmm. just because from a young age we want to like, make sure they know 
our beliefs mm-hmm. um, and they're able to hear the gospel early on. And um, that's really important to us. And then just kind of like the, the cool part too is like, you know, from tomorrow when I do my keynote, I'm not going to talk about Jesus from stage or, right. or I don't have like John three sixteen in my bio, but because of the relationship that, you know, the deep relate, the peril social relationship we have with people. Mm-hmm. So I'll often like ask people's prayer requests later if it's a one-on-one thing and like so a fan comes up and they seem like they, they, they have like a deep connection. And that's for me, one of my favorite parts of my job or like a, a big one is a waiter, right? Like there'll be a fan and there'll be a waiter. And then we, you know, have that 20 minute conversation throughout dinner, just here and there. And at the end, it's like, Hey, what's a prayer request? I can pray for you. And my wife and I like to pray for people at the end of our week, the people we met and, uh, awesome. and like it kind of like rattles people in yeah. the way that I was rattled, right? Like it snaps yeah. you out of the, like, their normal like questions the routine yeah. Yeah. and uh i think that's the ministry that i have it's like one on one even though there's like millions of people mm-hmm. and a lot of believers or christians have told me in the past like why don't you like on sunday make a video that like encourages people to go to church or make us a, a story about that but i honestly think that would turn off mm-hmm. yeah a lot of people just because of I mean, like, may, maybe it'd be great for some people who it's, yeah. it's not natural for me to say it it right. would be very awkward it's almost <laughs> like you have to be strategic about it yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not in a way of hiding it, it, but it's in like a way of, I don't think that's the best way in our current cultural climate Mm -hmm. to actually encourage people Mm -hmm. to, you know, go to church or to, to really, to meet Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think you do a lot of it just through, you bring so much joy to the platform and you're such a positive person and then your charity work and, um, your foster, yeah, you guys foster children and all of that just really speaks to, it's like they... They'll know you by your fruit. And, yeah, totally. And, and like then, we have a lot of crew members that since we work in Hollywood that'll come up and they'll ask the very particular question. It's been the same over years. They'll come up and be like, there's something different about you and a lot of your team. Like what is different? Like I can't put my finger on it. Yeah. And they're like, we know like, it's not that you just don't swear. Like there's something here. <laughs> like, is it, maybe it's Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel you, like, yeah. yeah, you guys are different. Yeah. yeah there's definitely awesome. a, just you're approachable and you're kind and there's definitely, it was very obvious. Like we, we knew right away that you guys were fellow believers cause you could just tell. Yeah. So that was really neat. It is always cool to be able to guess. You're like, I bet <laughs> yeah. they're Christians. Yeah. 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 It was very obvious, but yeah, I, I meant to ask you guys also about, I know we've kind of kept you for a while, but we meant to ask you guys also about your work with foster kids. How did you, how did that start? And I, you and Rachel both had that connection right away. Yeah. I mean, that was more her. Um, she was uh, studying to be a social worker. She was working uh, in a social work office for adoption, specifically in her department. And then she would just bring home the cases. And like she would like in that job, uh, you have to talk to somebody or mm-hmm. else you're going to go crazy. So mm-hmm. I would be her like person besides her coworkers. But she'd come home and her thing was like, there's not enough room. She was like, we literally like, there's a kid waiting in the office overnight with another worker right now because there's not a bed. And mm-hmm. I was like, she'd be telling me this. And meanwhile, we're like looking back, we had just got an, our first home and it was um, like three rooms. And I was like, oh, there's like two rooms in the back. Like, that's kind of crazy that like we, you could have brought them home. And, yeah. and she's like, well, we'd have to sign up and it'd be like a whole, you know, it's called fostering. And I knew, I didn't know anything about foster. I knew about adoption because my youngest sister's adopted. Okay. Um, and we did that when I was in high school. Mm. And Rachel had um, two adoptive siblings. So I knew a little bit about adoption, but like foster, I knew, like I knew the stereotypes from movies kind mm-hmm. of thing. Yeah. Um, where it's like super, super complicated. And it turns, I mean, it turns out it, it is really complicated. Mm-hmm. Um, you're essentially watching uh, a kid or several kids in your home and you're meanwhile, like the state is the legal guardian. Right. Um, you're just like a caretaker. And right now in, at least in California and LA County, the goal is for them to reunite with their bio family. That's like mm-hmm. what they figured out was the best overall, not for, again, it's so complicated, but mm-hmm. like overall as a number, it makes more sense to get the kids back to their bio family. Mm-hmm. If the family can get, you know, as much healing as they can, yes. either out of their addiction or a lot of times it's a, a just a fa- um, financial crisis of like they don't have a safe apartment. Mm-hmm. It's like a very dangerous situation happening. Um, so we just, it was like, hey, well, we have a room 
And that was around the time we were going on The Amazing Race. And the thing, it was a 30-day commitment off the grid. She would have to quit uh, her schooling for her master's and the job a little bit. So she was like, it could be the perfect time to pause that. And maybe we foster when we get back from The Amazing Race and just see what happens from there. So we fostered. Um, so that was probably soon after. We're going on our 10th year of marriage. It was like maybe a year and a half after we got married that we were doing that. And then um, we had our first kiddo for a couple months, six, seven months. And it's, you know, you love them as your own kid. Yeah. Like it's it's so hard in that way. Right. Um, and you, you, you lo- you're literally like to this little baby, we were their mom and dad, right? Yeah. Uh, and they would see their mom and dad every, you know, d- every kid's visits are different. I think he went to his parents every three days or four days or a weekend visits or something like mm-hmm. that. But yeah, I mean, it, he was our son for a little bit yeah. and we loved him like that because every kid deserves a parent during mm-hmm. their their life. And um, but then he went back, I think we took like a few months off and then just needed a break. Mm-hmm. I remember how long, but then we got our next placement, and that was my oldest now, mm-hmm. who is adopted, Mason. Yeah, and uh, and so he was with us for I think th- two and a half, three years before he was adopted, and then uh, meanwhile we got pregnant. Yeah, to a bio kid. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, we fostered one more in between there, okay. uh, a little girl who was my first girl, and then we have a bio daughter now. Right, right. Oh, nice. but yeah, it's a journey. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of. Uh, heartbreak here and there yeah. but we always say like the kids we have more capabilities to heal than the kids like mm-hmm. we we can deal with that a lot mm-hmm. better than yeah yeah that's gotta them. be really hard because you do want to give them all that love but then yeah you're gonna get completely attached. Yeah, and you can't you can't have, like there's a lot of people who are like can do you have to like love them less and it's like i've had bio kids now i've had two two bio kids that are stuck with me we have adopted <laughs> um the oldest and we fostered a few others, and like I can say, g- genuinely, you love them equally. Yeah, like they're all different. Mm-hmm. Um, just kind of like all your kids are different. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not like your love. At least we found that our love hasn't changed. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. I've, I've never fostered older kids. Like I, I have some friends that fostered. Um, they'll do like right before they age out mm-hmm. at eighteen. They'll grab them the last year of high school to help them out because they've already usually had a lot of placements and are having difficulty in school or whatever. Um, but I've asked them too, and I'm like, is it changed with age? And like, no, I mean, like, like we've never been a parent to young ones, but yeah, we've had high schoolers and we love them. Like feels like our kids. So yeah, wow. that's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. God that's bless you guys so, for doing that. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was thinking. Thank you for doing that. That's, that's so amazing because you open your home, but your heart and then you do have to heal from that yeah. when they leave you. The hard part that we've navigated in the last couple of years with <clears throat> the later placements is um, our, we have kids that are permanent now. Mm-hmm. And it's like, how do you navigate, you know, their heartbreak right. and them figuring out, you know, is my si- is this a sibling? Are they leaving? Like, what's yeah. that like? Yeah. So we've slowed down the placements now as, as we've figured out. We also have three kids. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're like, on your family. Yeah. I mean, we like don't want a fourth right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not right now. Yeah. We're in the we're in the. What they call the thick of it. You were yeah. gonna say you so, were in the thick of it. Yeah. yeah, we had we had four hundred eight. Um, but Jeez. really, after th- <laughs> after three, it's just chaos. It doesn't even matter after that. It's just. I'll go. I'll go tell that to Rachel. Yeah. When I get home, <laughs> babe, it's just it's, it's all just, the same after. Yeah, we've we've got three. It is well. And then, the same. I think even numbers are nice because then they pair off. So yeah. 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 Well, so I always encourage everyone to just have all the babies. <laughs> like, just I love them. Yeah, I was I was hoping there'd be babies. There's not gonna be babies at this event, but I'm uh, the weird person that will like smell sm- other people's babies. Babies are, I'll give it. My daughter's super cute, yeah. um, but overall, babies like I feel like we've done babies now. I don't know, six times. <laughs> I'm I'm done for a little bit. Yeah, know? it's but quick. Once they're older, it's just it's such a blip. Mm-hmm. You know, it feels. Like I think it that's just- it. Like I'm I'm currently because I was there. Um, I see my my middle my middle is would have been four when we had our baby now, and there was a brief it was like four years yeah you know, we were out of it, so there was a moment of like oh baby would be sweet and then yeah. that that's actually made having uh, Emerson really yeah amazing now who's seven months because it's like we're reliving these moments that we actually weirdly forgot about like mm-hmm. you're yeah. re looking up like how often do I have to change diaper mm-hmm. or like what is the feeding schedule of a you know 
seven months like you yep. you forget really you fast. Do. Yeah. yeah it's interesting but then you know also with i think you enjoy the third child or the fourth child more because you realize how fast it goes so you cherish these little moments because oh, yeah. you're like the turtle knees that last like two weeks <laughs> yeah and they no longer have turtle knees yeah that's what we're literally doing is that where they're crawling oh no it's like when you first Newborn bring them babies. home and then you know how they're the skin on their knees is saggy because they're oh. got the skinny little bull legs. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think we call it turtle knees. That's called turtle knees. Yeah. I feel like Emerson still has those. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but she just learned to crawl. She just, just learned to crawl. No. Oh, I thought you were gonna say turtle knees is when um, yeah, they first start crawling, but it's like it becomes like almost callous. Yeah, um, yeah. it does. Because I mean, at least on our, we have like yeah. hard floors. Yep. Um, but she just has been crawling for two weeks now, and like that's all she does. Yeah. But it's like her knees are always, and it feels bad. It's so cold uh, oh. now on the floors. Yeah. But it's like all red and like callous. Yeah. yeah. Oh, They're it's tough. so fun. It is so they fun. They are tough. It's, yeah, it's mm -hmm. crazy. Resilient. Yeah. I think it's great. All right. Well, we don't want to keep you any longer, but thank you once again so much yeah. for agreeing to do yeah, this. Thanks for having yeah. me. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's been amazing. And uh, thank you for all the content that you put out. Like I said, you, you yeah. literally, your content literally has meaning in our life mm -hmm. That's for cool. a, a period of time in our life. And, uh, just thank you for making wholesome family content yeah. and keeping that on the platform. We greatly appreciate it. Of course. Anything yeah. else from you, Mama? No, I think that's it. Yeah, it's, it's been a pleasure. I feel like I know you so much more now. And I'm looking forward to your episode with uh, Chip and Joanna. <laughs> no, it's coming. Yeah, next week. Fun. Next week. And we're uh, looking forward to listening to you speak tomorrow. Yeah. Can't yes, wait for that. I'm Once looking again. forward to figuring out what that's going to be. Like. <laughs> what do you think I should talk about? Oh, oh. man. Mm. What do you think? Because here's my thing. Um... And you could probably cut the podcast if you want already no. there, if unless they want to hear YouTube stuff. So it's the last, one of the last slots of, did this already start yesterday? No. No. Does it start tomorrow? It starts yes. okay. tomorrow. Got it. Oh, so it's a one day thing? Or am I on the first day? It's a couple days. Yeah, you're on the first day. Okay, cool. So yeah. like end of the first day, honestly, you're probably going to already heard everything about algorithms mm -hmm. and uh, consistency, mm -hmm. quality over quantity, or mm -hmm. quantity qual quantity over quality. Mm -hmm. uh, you all heard every version of everything, probably. Mm -hmm. What sh what do I have to talk about? That's like unique to you, unique to me, but also just helpful. I think, like, of all the the speeches that we heard last year, the one that spoke to us the most was Ryan Trahan's mm -hmm. when he was talking about. Um, toiling and not toiling mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. not obsessing but it, it's such an opposite message of what you and not get. obsessing over um not like, forcing it not forcing it you know like you you know when a video comes out and then you're like oh it's coming out slow and then you see that 10 to 10 pop up and you're like scrambling like change the thumbnail oh, fix the title yeah. and he just was like i'm gonna leave it because i yeah. picked it or, yeah. or designating blocks of time within your schedule to make sure that, again, you are keeping your priorities in order because, as at least we know for ourselves, it's so easy to get lost and, and caught up in, you know, hey, let's set this aside. Let's put this on the back burner because we have a schedule and we have our own self-imposed deadlines. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's again, it's something that we grapple with. And I really I really thought that that was a, a huge takeaway for us last year. Mm -hmm. Your yeah. speech was great, too. I meant to yeah. tell you that, by the way. I thought it was so impressive. You were such a composed speaker. I don't know how it is that you are so polished. You know, I remember about speaker. last year? Wasn't the one, it, wasn't that last year where it was like skipping every yeah. Yes. Oh, my God. You, you skip rolled with the punches. Sweating bullets. You were like, you were like we doing something that. with your hand, like to tell people like, yeah, you were telling like I was your like, guys like Ryan, switch it get or... the frick back. <laughs> yeah, but you were you, you like went did this with like, yeah. but then you didn't. You're oh uh, man. Yeah, that's were... what I remember in listening to you speak is that you you handled that and you rolled with it so seamlessly and it was yeah. so impressive to oh, me yeah, because I'm a horrible public speaker. I would have just dropped the mic and ran out. Yeah, I would have been like it's over. Yeah, that was about <laughs> the time I was gonna do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was about to about to happen. So you guys, where what questions would you ask if you were in the audience tomorrow? Like if you had an open mic. Hmm. Hmm. Like, what are you? I, I, or just, yeah. What are you coming here looking to glean, or what are the biggest areas you feel like you? Oh, I don't know. I'm gonna be helpful with that. What do you? Have? I don't know. I we kind of don't feel like we fit in here. Like the all the speeches that are going on, they're just not like, very why you, relatable. Why do you say that? Like, what's not relatable? It doesn't feel achievable. So when somebody gets oh, up there and they talk too, about it's too big. They're too far ahead. Yeah. yeah, you're so scaled up from where it is that we are. Like I said, we're, we're, we're grinders. We're a mom and pop operation, if you want to call it that. And and sometimes there is such a, a massive such a distinction. It seems like there's such a, a major barrier of entry between the way it is that we function. And you essentially run a production 
company. Right. And and we are just us with a couple of cameras trying to figure it out as we stumble along the way. Wow. So, um, and I think that's a lot of people. So then you hear like, oh, you can get 10 million or this min, you know. And it's just like, it's like, point, I'm it's never going to do that. And I think it causes people to quit. Because oh, it becomes discouraging in the mm. process. Because when this is where like, oh, this means you've made it, but you can't get there. Got it. Then you just quit. You're like, I'm never going to make it there. It's so far away. Yeah. Like we were just watching those guys that do. We're hoping that they do your story. They do the trailers. Mm. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. They, they're really so talented. impressive. Yeah. So yeah. we were just watching that and they just did Mark Rober. Yeah. And it was the best one yet. And then he talked to Mr. Beast for him, and then Mr. Beast said, "If you five can million. get to five million, they, as a fellow creator, I saw the deflation on their face. They just were like, he said no, yeah, like <laughs> because they're at what one hundred and thirty thousand. Yeah, five million is nothing when you're Mr. Beast, but when you're us, it's not achievable. Yeah, it feels like. Well, it, he, I don't, I don't, I haven't asked Jimmy about that, but." And I have to bookmark that question because that could be interesting. But I have a feeling he does it what like the same reason I would generally say not going to come on the podcast if you have hundred unless you have a hundred thousand yeah um, listeners just because it can ruin your audience yeah mm-hmm. um, and I don't know the stick uh, their story how long they've been doing it but there is something about proving like you you don't yeah. want to be Jimmy and then have he gets a million requests right. I actually heard, that's funny, you heard a no. I heard yes. Oh, really? And okay. that to me is like, oh, get to five million. Yeah. And then you're going to have a potential yes. Yeah. Yeah. But he wants to make sure you're serious about in that format and that you're bringing a little bit of an audience and your stakes to it versus mm-hmm. right now that he'd be sense. the one giving everything yeah. pretty it much, like his, his brand. Yep. Um, yeah, and we talked but, about it We because we kind of went like maybe this is what his intention was. Mm-hmm. And like he's trying to like light a fire on him and push him like yeah it's a very nuanced thing I think I think perspective plays into it a lot if you're yeah. us hearing that I was frustrated for them yeah um and seeing that that's how the video got wrapped up so I I think it just depends on where it is yeah. you are approaching it from or how you're looking at it but. I think yeah when you, you see these big creators you do want to reach that but then it doesn't feel achievable so like if if everyone on stage is talking about having these massive production companies. Then you go home and you upload your video and you get 150 views. You're just like, I'm never going to make it. And they quit. Yeah. And maybe you lose a lot of really great creators through becoming discouraged and quitting. Sure. So I think there's a lot of people don't understand that you can do really well on YouTube in the in mediocrity. <laughs> like yeah, the, those super well. those middle yeah. channels that have no overhead. Yeah. Some of them are killing it. And people have no idea. That's why I have a problem with taking advice from especially like anomalies, mm-hmm. which is Jimmy, which is yeah. me, which is Mark Rober, like yeah. anybody probably over eight, maybe 10 million followers mm-hmm. right now currently is probably more anomaly mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, or, or like, I mean, you could look at it like they're maybe doing something right that nobody else is doing. But if I look at it, it's more time in the game versus like every, everyone around 5 million. Yeah. Um, that feels really achievable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. But, but I agree. You can. I mean, you can have a hundred thousand subscribers and have a very successful mm-hmm. channel. And I did for yes. many years with like my Final Cut King stuff. Yeah, mm. paid for your fifteen college. years ago. Yeah, so it's yeah. like that didn't have more. By the time Vine was happening, I wasn't higher than three hundred thousand subscribers. Mm-hmm. And I had had that for four years. And that was like, that could have been my job forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like it's something that gets missed in these conferences. Honestly, we, we are kind of the, the middle class YouTuber, yeah. um, but it's been, it's been life changing for us. It really has been. I was caught before, you know, we were scraping by on a single income for a family of six and doing YouTube has literally changed our lives mm-hmm. um, financially. Yeah. Especially. So that's cool. Yeah. I think, I think if, if that's a message that could be put out to um, just because it does seem more achievable and tangible yeah. for so many people that are starting out, I think that that would, uh, I always wondered that about like Colin and Samir when they they talk, they always talk to, you know, like really big creators. I'm like, I wonder if they should have someone on that can explain that you actually can do really well if you are a middle of the road channel. Like that's okay. Yeah. And that's what that's very achievable. Yeah. I think anyone can do it just through grinding. Right. Don't give up and keep grinding and you can make a living at YouTube. Yeah. As humans, we tend to to have these like. For some reason, we find the the most successful stories, and those yeah. are always at t- in anything in athletics yeah. and yeah. business and yeah. YouTube, mm-hmm. and then uh, those become the like the thing you need to 
strive for. Yeah. yeah. When for a lot of people, I think for actually most people, having a team might be more self-destructive than actually helpful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you're not ready, to, I mean, there's so many yeah. growing pains that come with that. And yes. honestly, like keeping you two and that forever could be the way to go. Like, who yeah. am I to say that for you? Yeah. Well. I don't know. I mean, it would be nice to have an editor. My my problem is that it's like our family and I have a hard time yeah. giving over. Like, you know how you edit your family yeah. videos? Like, it'd yeah. be really hard to Oh, it's give. your baby. Yes. Yeah. It's like, your baby and no one else uses Filmora. Filmora <laughs> yeah, no one else can kill Filmora. Film. Like, I should be, like, yeah, Filmora queen. No one will buy that. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be like, what? Oh, that's too funny. Be like, it's 99 cents. You can get the whole course. Yeah, I'm going to transfer my project file to you, but you're not going to be able to open it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. There's no airdrop. There's no, yeah, yeah, it's it's not efficient. But yeah, I don't know. That that was something that I noticed last year was I just didn't relate with mm. really any of the speakers. And then when Ryan was like, don't toil, make time for your family, keep your friends close, yep. make sure that real life matters more yeah. than YouTube. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't let a 10 to 10 ruin your week. Oh, totally. You have to have a life outside yeah. of this yes. world. It's, yeah, you know it I mean? spoke to us. We were like, yeah. Yeah, I kept, I kept bumping her, listening yeah, to. Yeah, like, see, don't. Like, we, we took nuggets from everybody. Yeah. Yeah. We took things away from you as well. Yeah. But yeah, I, I agree with Melissa. There, it just seems like there's such a wide gap there between folks like us and, and folks like you and, yeah. and everybody else that we yeah. we refer to as. I wanted that. Like, I wanted to, to be, I wanted it really badly. But then I started to realize, like, we're older for the platform. Yeah. We're doing content that YouTube is not going to promote. Long form, slow ongoing story like we make a tv show yeah and each episode is a continuing story like that's never going to pop on youtube that's never going to be this and so i had to become satisfied with that to find yeah. happiness in what i was doing mm-hmm. and yeah we struggle with contentment we do for right. sure yeah. yeah don't we all yeah yeah yeah. I mean, yeah yeah it's hard yeah and you're like you know people don't like the story it's like our family yeah. Yeah. It's so personal you, for you us. don't like our life yeah, yeah so yeah. it becomes very personal yeah so yeah i don't know but that that was my biggest takeaway from last year i think we left and we were like mm, i don't know that we'll go back because we just didn't it didn't click with us it, we didn't relate but now we're doing the podcast and now i really want the podcast to go because this is so fun yeah just to sit and who gets the opportunity to sit down and just have these crazy conversations? I think now is the time for podcasting too, because you just went through a big rush of around the time Joe Rogan was getting bought mm-hmm. out. Yeah. Everyone's like, oh, I'm going to do podcasts. But I think at this point they're all fading away mm. yeah. or the ones that you're either going to stay in the game or, or right. Make you're, you're kind of, you were either doing it for the fad or you're actually loving it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. now I think you're going to get a little dwindling and then, uh, rebirth. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. We really enjoy it. We get nervous. I mean, and, and excited every time we, we get to do one, especially yeah. when we have a guest. So, yeah. um, yeah, we, we hope it takes off and works and we, we, we see a path. We just have to make it happen. So yeah. we'll see where it goes. Yeah. But we appreciate you coming. Cause I mean, we're not a hundred thousand podcasts and we did just hit a hundred thousand on our first podcast today. So <laughs> our, so, our very first one to hit it. So <laughs> there you go. That's why it happened. Yeah. All of a sudden, one of them like hit a hundred thousand a day. I was like, woo. <laughs> what well, like you it? got put, that's higher than the average is like what? 43, 40, 40 50. Yeah. Yeah. 40, 40, 50. So what, what was the topic on that one? It was Sarah Weaver. Ruby Ridge. Ruby Ridge. Yeah. So, mm. but uh, yeah, I'm really glad that that one, <laughs> that one went off because her message needed to be heard. But that was just, it was such a weird what's thing. What's the watch? T- what's the retention on a... That hour like, 10 pot hers was two something right yeah, yeah two and a half. i think 42 minutes is the average watch time yeah, on, that. It's not on that one yeah. but what about your regular hour it's pretty good it's yeah like probably at least a third i have to pull it up 25 minutes uh, yeah. or so that's high we're like, pretty but we have a community it's following our community. so it's i think <laughs> it's our our analytics are very different from a lot of people like it's like our subscriber to views is our subscriber number will be like 70 percent are subscribed 30 percent aren't yeah and people are like oh whoa really and it's like yeah but we don't get put out <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, right. youtube's not gonna like yeah. try this new people yeah. so it's like just... click through rate every time anyone brings up like oh hey here are the things to, to focus on it's like we, re- we do really well yeah. in those categories but again we're That's a community what's based click through rate i mean it can be really really high 25 percent usually and honestly the, the biggest yeah. videos that That's we've crazy. ever had all but the, it, but it doesn't make it go. So everything that they tell you to do at Vid Summit, like you have to have us. high retention. You have to have a click through it. You have to have your subscribers need to be watching. We have all of those right. numbers. Yeah, it doesn't get put out. So yeah. I'm like, it's all bogus. Yeah. <laughs> like the, the algorithm's a lie. It doesn't exist. Yeah. So yeah, we. Well, the frustrated. algorithm to me is just like a person, 
or a general population that watches stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like it just means probably currently your stuff is a smaller niche group. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like a smaller market size. Mm -hmm. Right. So, right. which I think I've always said that has way more power even than a big audience too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we're grateful for it. Yeah, for sure. we are. We're, we Absolutely. love our people. We have the best community. And then like every year we do the cancer drive and it's so, so fun to do that with our people because it lets them belong to the channel mm -hmm. because they get to all do something together and, yeah. and we talk about it and we go live and they'll write us messages like, oh, we sent a iPad and it's That's like, awesome. cool guys. And then they get to watch the completion of it every year. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Like you guys have done some amazing things with charity, with donating the money over to the, it's a- Yeah, but on the flip side, we get less, uh, you know, uh, with millions of people, you we still get less engagement on that depth. You know, because it is a mainstream, because 95% come in through the For You page. Mm -hmm. It's not really connecting with me as a person. They're connecting with, like, some tricks yeah. Yeah. Um, or some entertainment, yeah. which is great. But, again, that net is getting everybody. And mm -hmm. so they're not deeply, deeply connected. Yeah. Right. Right. Like, our merch barely moves because of that. So versus yeah. you guys, if you – when you launch a pro, when you launch your whiskey or your wine, guarantee <laughs> that stuff will sell out because people will want to have yeah. that while they listen to your podcast. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It, pro it probably would. We feel weird about that too because it's not, it's not like we never want to like exploit the audience or feel like, hey, like we're just doing this for money. Right. So that, you know, you guys provide us with a, a stream of yeah. revenue. So, but I can already tell you guys want to do that. So that's why your first product will be like – an extension of you, a natural yeah. one, yeah. and yeah. everyone will know that. Yeah, wine feels yeah. the most natural because <laughs> it's been an ongoing thing. But like, I'm like, how do you launch a wine? It's actually pretty complicated. Yeah, you've got to get a, a license. I was yeah. recently looking into it. Yeah. It's easier to slap your label on somebody's. Right. Yeah, but you can do if you do the work. Uh, it could be worth it. And right. you guys could find a cool winery even up in your area. Yeah. Mm. Or is there? Does Northern Idaho have? Much. Washington does. Washington yeah. has a ton. Yeah, um, Eastern, Eastern Washington. Which you guys have. You have roots there. We both. Yeah, we, we both, both do. do. She so grew like, up there. That's yeah. part of your story. Yeah, um, yeah, and it'd be close. I mean, Eastern yeah. Washington's literally right yeah. there. North so. Idaho is hops. <clears throat> All the yeah. hops. Okay. Beer, all yeah. the beer. Maybe some beer. Yeah. yeah. We've kicked around with the idea of doing a children's book, so maybe we could ask yeah. about that. Yeah. Yeah, Cause... I know you did such a great job launching your children's. Yeah. Book. What yeah. would you guys write about? Living on property. We were thinking like, about turning like the animals into characters and yeah. not even having us in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just maybe our feet. Kind of like remember old Muppet Babies, the cartoon where like yep. the nanny would walk mm -hmm. in yep. it was just her feet. Uh huh. Like maybe that maybe just cool. like his boots because he always wears these big rubber boots. But it'd be about the animals. We have you like, could do so many versions of that's like all the way from I could picture like kids, you know those right before bed, yeah. easy reader lullaby books. Mm -hmm. um, but then all the way up to like, you could go to like, you guys ever read like Boxcar Kids, or um, like yeah, just like I read a, like a yeah. middle school reader, yeah, and... Ramona the Pest, all that kind of grade level stuff. Our kids are reading the Tuttle Twins right now, and they have books like that. Yeah, um, but yeah, something like that I think would be really great. Something with a good moral, family friendly. It's hard to find good books now for kids. Yeah. The kids yeah. books, I I try to find the old kids books. Yeah, because they're just different now. I don't yep. know. They don't have that feel. Mm -hmm. There's a feel to the '80s and '90s children's yeah, books. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, that would be that would be fun. Something. I'm gonna yeah. cut all this. You do it all. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can turn all this off. Before I do that though, thank you so much again, seriously. Yeah, of yeah. course. Really, thank really you guys for the corn. So <laughs> yeah. what, is, what is this called? Glass uh, gem glass corn. Gem. Glass gem. Mm -hmm.